Hey, folks, Quilly Team here, and welcome, welcome, welcome to a Everything Has Changed Wednesday live stream. This was supposed to be some more CK3, and I do intend to continue to play CK3, but the big news about the new RimWorld expansion has dropped, as well as the unstable build for the 1.5 patch has been made live on Steam. I mean, partially, I'm sure to look for bugs and to get some community feedback, but I'm certain that the real reason is so that modders can get to work on their 1.5 compatibility, which I'm very, very hyped about. Let's get the main screen turned on. So what we're gonna do today, I have loaded the, a new game with the unstable patch, and we're probably gonna play a little bit, but we're gonna start off by reading the news announcement, reading um, what's coming in the expansion, and we're gonna read through all the 1.5 patch notes. We're also gonna check on things in here and see how things look and compare. Right away when I zoomed out, I was like, hey, What's this stuff? Is there some sort of weird graphic glitch going on? But no, it's a new highlight mode that's available interface. It used to be when you zoomed out all the way, you would get dots, right? Colored dots. But now there's an option for silhouettes. Anyway, that's one of the most minor things. Of course, the most major thing that has come in the 1.5 patch is built-in wall lights in vanilla RimWorld. It has happened! Wall lamps without a mod! Don't even need an expansion. It's just in 1.5. Oh baby, we're gonna have a great time with this. Wall lamps, wall lamps, wall lamps. Exactly. We get some hype for wall lamps. <laughs> the ribald world in the title is a joke. Um, there was a thing because the first expansion. So the game is Rim World, and the first two expansions were royalty and ideology, and people got in their heads when um, Tiny T's the previous expansion, which we now know as Biotech. Um, but people had assumed that the expansion would start with an M and everything would continue to spell out RimWorld. And when we saw the mechs, we thought, yeah, it's going to be mechanoids or, you know, something with mechs or something like that in the title. And then it was finally released as Biotech. And so then the joke became that the game is called RibWorld. And now the next expansion is called Anomaly. So now it's Ribowled. Although I still like to think of the expansions as royalty, ideology, mech shit, and now weird shit. So now the expan you know, the acronym still works out. <clears throat> so let's go and if I do this, nope, not that tab. Which one is it? This window. Good. If I do this and then flick on the display capture and do that. There we go. So we're gonna go ahead and read through the announcement of the expansion. We're then gonna look through the 1.5 patch changes. And then uh, we'll also actually, we'll probably look at the RimWorld anomaly page first. Hey, look, I think we're getting flamethrowers. Mm. <clears throat> boop, 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 boop. So, um, yeah, I don't know what, the, we'll take a look at the new health menu. I don't see much different there. I don't know what changed in the prisoner menu. We'd have to get prisoners to be able to uh, verify that, so we'll see how that uh, that shakes out here. Um, anomaly expansion and update 1.5 announced. Sanity shredding perils abound in this new horror themed expansion. We're super excited to announce our new horror themed expansion, Rimworld Anomaly. This expansion adds all manner of monstrous, mysterious, and maddening threats, containment facilities to capture and study dark entities, and a new reality twisting endgame. Anomaly releases in one month. We don't have a date but in one month. So right away, you're getting sort of Cthulhu-esque kind of thing. You're getting um, some SCP kind of stuff, um, some x files -y kind of thing. And I'm so bitter that I just started a Let's Play. I started recording my new RimWorld Let's Play on Sunday. And then on Monday, Tynan drops the teaser the new expansion is coming. And from the art right away, um, from the art right away, I thought, oh my God, this fits, this would have fit in so well with the theme of my like um, ne Nexo archeology span let's play that I've started. So it's like a little bit of missed timing. Well, although it does seem like it's gonna be a little darker than that. Maybe what it could do is I could start the exact same let's play over again, but this is like the dark version of it. So we've had sort of the light one and I don't know, something like that. And there's a new ending in this apparently. So <clears throat> he knew, yeah, Tynan knew. He just timed it intentionally to mess with me. That's how it and yeah, I like a, a lab coat under a duster could imply more layering of clothing, which is interesting. We're also announcing the upcoming update 1.5 to the base game, which will be released at the same time as Anomaly. You can currently test this update on the Unstable Steam branch, which is what I have loaded in the background. <coughs> 
Uh, see the bottom of the announcement for details. Yada, yada, yada. Anomaly's not available yet. It's just the, you know, update to the base game. All right, spoiler warning below is high level description of expansion content. There's some spoilers here. Hopefully everything with, everyone's fine with this. About Anomaly. The expansion begins when your colonists accidentally provoke a mad super intelligence. From then on, madness manifests. Monstrous creatures, mind-bending mysteries, infiltrating parasites, and sanity-shredding phenomena that twist the whole world around you. Here we can see we've got someone equipped with flamethrowers. Huh? 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 And lots of creepy monstrous shit going down all over the place. Um, how do I close this? Um, hang on, let me reset my zoom level. Uh... Okay, let me refresh the page. Why is nothing in the browser responding? Hold on one second here. Oh, it opened in a new wind. Or it advanced. I thought it was a pop up that I had to close. My bad. I just had to hit back. Okay, let me go and bring this back up again. Okay. Uh, we've got this giant hole in the ground which doesn't look creepy at all with weird fleshy things. Oh, and then it goes back to the top of the page. I'm not gonna be clicking on any more images because it's actually annoying to, to patrol around. Um, do, 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 do. Inspired by classics like Cabin in the Woods, The Thing, which I mean, one of the one of the types of modes over here definitely sounded like it. The Cthulhu Mythos, Hellraiser, and many more. Anomaly goes beyond fighting monsters. This expansion presents ominous, puzzling, mind-controlling, and earth-shaking threats to build your personal horror story. Some of the twisted scenarios you'll encounter. At night, hear the screeching of a psychically invisible hunter that feeds on human souls. Build proximity alarms to detect when it's near, but you can only fight it when it chooses to reveal itself. Chip away at its health every time it returns and collect and study chunks of its flesh. Turn the tables, become the hunter, and kill it where it lives. A massive flesh creature is growing across the landscape, consuming and covering the whole map. Yeah, one of the screenshots, um, I think on this page, is like this crazy pink blob that's just covering the entire map. I mean, this has got some of it. Oh, right here. Look at this. Look at this pink crap that's covering the entire colony and going into the rooms and everything. This is what we're going to need flamethrowers for. Um, it growing across the landscape, consuming and covering the whole map with a quivering mass of meat. It defends itself with beasts and acid. Fight it to get samples of its nervous system, then study them until you can venture to its heart and kill it for good. It does look like Zerg creep. A parasite has mind controlled some of your colonists, but who? And right away when I read this, I said, oh my God, we're the thing now. And then other people pointed out that it's also a little among us, right? They pretend to be human as they work to infest others, track evidence, imprison, interrogate, and medically test people to find out who is infested before it's too late. A pulsos, pulsating obelisk crash lands near your base. And so I, I, one of the things I think this is going to add is a lot of um, variety because it's I think it's going to be like one of these is going to happen in your game or maybe once you resolve it, maybe another one can happen later. But it feels like kind of a long term thing. It actually almost gives me a little bit of the vibe of for those of you who played Surviving Mars, right? The mysteries, you don't necessarily if you have it on random, you don't know what mystery you're going to get when the game starts and sort of an involved thing to solve. <clears throat> Uh, a pulsating obelisk crash lands near your base. You can try to suppress its filthy energy, but the obelisk may lash out and violently mutate your people, copy them endlessly, or abduct them to an endless gray maze. Your colonists become obsessed with a beautiful golden cube, which is totally cheese, and we all know it's cheese. <clears throat> they build statues of the cube. They worship the cube. They love the cube. A corpse arrives that looks exactly like one of your colonists and seems to follow them. No matter what you do, the corpse returns. And many more weird and horrifying events. Love it. Beautiful. Horror combat. You'll fight battles against shrieking flesh beasts, hordes of shambling undead, spherical death machines, massive devouring water beasts, lumpen imitations of human beings, and many more nightmarish perils. Use the monsters against your normal human and mechanoid foes where you can. Construct new tools and gear to help you. Flamethrowers and Hellcat rifles. IEDs that resurrect the dead. Flesh mutating pulsars that transform living creatures. Insanity inducing weapons and crossbows that stun your targets. Capture and study entities in your facility. To defeat the monolith's manifestation, you must gain their power. Build a grand containment facility so you can capture monsters, study them, and exploit them. Expand it with stronger walls, floors, and doors to keep them secure. Exploit your captives to use their power against your enemies but don't push them too far. 
Harvest the new bioferrite and shard resources from your malevolent menagerie to use in experimental serums, psychic rituals, ghoulification surgeries, and void-powered constructions. Fight the cultists who serve the machine mine. Macabre cultists will attack and perform their psychic rituals with suicidal commitment. They may stand in rows or chant around in a ritual circle or whisper hateful psychic curses against your colony. Destroy them before they summon bloody beasts, abduct your people, or drive them mad with psychic influence. You can use the same rituals for your own purposes. Summon the mass dead, rage-filled blood, connect with the void, oh, rain rage-filled blood, sorry, connect with the void, steal the minds and health of your foes, and more. Choose your fate in a new endgame. In the end, the Abyssal Void will swallow the world, and you must choose your fate. Why did we make Anomaly? Ludian Studios founder Tynan, why did he decide to make Anomaly? I want to give players new kinds of emotions they haven't encountered before in RimWorld. We've explored feelings around dramatic combat tension, family warmth, problem solving, and many more. Now I want to provoke new emotions, dread, psychological tension, suspicion, and mystery. The horror theme unlocks a new emotional landscape for us to explore. There aren't many games which mix management and horror either, so it was an interesting design challenge to marry these two elements. Plus, I saw Cabin in the Woods and I thought the Monster Lab was awesome. I've never seen Cabin in the Woods. Maybe I should. It was, all, it was important to me that this not just be a collection of monsters to shoot at, because the base game already generates those feelings of combat tension, and I wanted something new. So we made sure to design the new threats to follow the arc of classic horror stories. The protagonists encounter a mystery, then realize it's a threat, and try to survive while they learn about it, slowly building advantage before they try to turn the tables. It's a very RimWorld kind of chaos when several of these things are happening at once with different threats. This was really fun to work on, and I think the team did an awesome job. I can't wait for everyone to play it. Hi. So that's the expansion, which sounds insanely cool. Then we have update 1.5, which again is available now on Steam uh, through the unstable patch. You know, could crash, could do, could be buggy, could be unbalanced, could be all those things. But we can play around with it today, and we will. We have a lot to say about update 1.5. It's been nearly 18 months of work. If you're interested in trying update 1.5, you can play it on the unstable Steam branch, da 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 da. Modders should be able to use this public 1.5 unstable branch to update mods before update 1.5 is released to everyone next month. And that's the thing, um, when uh, when Biotech came out, a lot of the mods were already updated because of this little um, unstable period, which was really lovely. Read the full 1.5 changelog here, which we will. But there's a summary over here. <clears throat> Books, bookcases, couches, ornate doors. There are now books for your colonists to read and bookcases to store them in. Books are great for recreation and for their unique bonuses. Textbooks increase a specific skill. Schematics progress a certain research project. Novels increase recreation faster and tomes progress an anomaly specific research project. You can attain books from traders or as quest rewards. Storing books in bookcases increases the beauty of a room and makes nearby research benches faster and increases the XP and recreation gained from reading. They got an example here, Badger's Nuke, recreation gain multiplier, times 160%, which is pretty good. Like, chess tables, I think, are 130? This mediocre novel tells the story of a surgeon as he searches the universe for a rare collectible from his very favorite series. It is gripping during some parts, but the author constantly uses words inappropriately in an attempt to sound smart. The text was first printed many centuries ago. Couches function like armchairs, but now have room for two. And ornate doors are the first two-by-one door in RimWorld. It took some time... Uh, it took some work for the system to support doors that weren't one by one. They're very fancy and suit throne rooms, temples, or other prestigious buildings. You can see an example over here. Wall lamp, floodlights, and hidden conduits. Yes, you can now put lights on your walls and hide your conduits. Both, I mean, obviously the wall lamp mod is one of the most popular ones on the workshop, and I really like mods that let me make conduits not be visible. Um, I didn't even need them to be mechanically different. I just didn't want to see them. Uh, wall lamps and wall torches can now be placed directly on walls. They function like a floor lamp or torch would, but with a little less light. Floodlights are very powerful and expensive outdoor lights that cover large areas, which saves you from building several small lamps. I never usually worry about outdoor lighting, but now it's more convenient, so I might. Hidden conduits are useful for two reasons. They're harder to damage from explosions or fire. Hey, polar bear, thanks for the sub! Uh... And they're invisible to the player unless you've got the power slash building UI turned on. I love it. I love it. Because I hated seeing all the little cables. I always wanted to put them in walls and try to hide them as much as I could. Performance improvements. We've continued to work on optimizing RimWorld's performance. Pawns, 
characters and animals, are now drawn in parallel on a separate thread. The pawn render system was rewritten to allow for easy addition slash removal of visuals, and lots of optimizations were done on alerts, beauty calculations, and pen animal food search and behavior. We love performance improvements, and it looks to me like a lot of the stuff that might happen anomaly might involve like spawning a ton of monsters and stuff very quickly and in big masses. You know, you can imagine big masses of zombies or something like that. And so optimizing that probably makes a lot of sense. Crawling! Which does give me a bit of a Dwarf Fortress vibe, because characters in Dwarf Fortress can crawl, but... When downed, humans can now crawl on the ground. Crawling colonists leave blood trails, move away from danger, and will seek out the nearest place to recover, like hospital bed or sleeping spot. You'll see enemies crawling around too. It's rather dramatic. I mean, what a horrifying screenshot over here. I wonder how it impacts our, um, our trick to remove the legs of our permanent blood donors in prisons. Possessions from traits. When choosing your starting colonist, there's now a chance for them to spawn with possessions related to their traits. For example, a psychopath might carry a human heart, or a pyromaniac comes armed with molotovs, or someone who's greedy can have pockets full of gold. Sure, fine. I don't know how much that matters, but it's cute. This is going to matter to some people a lot. I've never really done um, waterside bases before. Mechanoid water emergence and slag chunks. Did you think the water was safe? Mechanoids can now surface from bodies of water, which requires adapting to oceans and lakes when building your base's defense. Also, certain large mechanoids have a chance to drop a mechanoid slag chunk when they're broken down. These act like a steel slag chunks and can be smelted for steel. Yet nowhere is safe. Bionic jaws and organ decay. Sometimes colonists lose their jaws in a terrible accident, but they can now be replaced with a new bionic prosthetic. See, I played with so many mods, I didn't realize we didn't have prosthetic jaws in vanilla. Keep an eye out on your colonist's organs, too. There's a chance they may develop a very rare organ decay disease. And then presumably we want to replace it with a bionic. Mine vein designator. Hey, it's another mod we don't need anymore. This command orders colonists to mine out a whole mineral lump in one click. For example, if you want to mine gold ore and want to ignore the surrounding rock, the mine vein tool tells colonists to mine all visible gold, plus any gold that gets revealed in the progress process. Wonderful. Another thing that um, I didn't have a mod for it these days, but I have before. Clean room. Selecting colonists and right-clicking a room that's dirty now gives you the option to clean the whole room. It's far more convenient than manually clicking dirt on the floor and queuing up cleaning actions. Yeah, baby. So good. This is also quite cool. New wanderers after game over. When all your colonists are dead or gone, there's a new option as part of the game over to create new wanderers. If you want a second chance with your colony, this allows you to create one to six new colonists to inhabit the remains of your colony instead of ending the game. Entirely optional. You don't have to use it if you prefer more hardcore experience. Um, I like it because it's just an option. Um, we've done cool things. You can reclaim fortresses and dwarf fortresses and things like that. And it can be good for a story sometimes. There could be cool vibes for this, especially if your new colonists come in with like completely different um, ideologies and things like that. That's neat. Why not, right? Search function. I've already played around with this a little bit and it works great. In the bottom right corner, there's now a magnifying glass icon on the search bar. You can type in to find item structures, enemies in your map. No more losing items. Default hotkey is Z. If I flip over to a uh, Rim world for just a second. We can see the magnifying glass right down here. And I can search for something like steam geysers, which has been an issue before. Hey, where are all the steam geysers in this map? Oh, they're here and there and there and there. Oh, lovely. Another mod I no longer need. I know I'm kind of covering it, but I mean, you, you get it, right? Um, oop. Tainted apparel, visual changes. Tainted apparel, clothes worn by someone who has died, now has a distinct darker color. Previously, it was easy to mix up tainted apparel with non-tainted apparel. UI improvements. There's an option to make colonist moods on the colonist bar much more visible. So I, I'm assuming it's this like, so I did notice an option here under interface with visible mood turned on. When on display is visual indicator on a character's portrait when at risk of a mental break. I think I use a mod called colored mood bar. So I'm assuming this might just replace that. Cool. Excellent. Because when I heard about it, I was like, doesn't it already do this? And I'm like, no, it's probably because of a mod I run. Uh, when you zoom out very far, pawns become highlighted, so they're easier to spot on the map. We also redesigned the prisoner and health tabs and improved the research UI and policy UI for better experience. So I'm not entirely sure how much of a change this is. This is the research UI now. I usually run a mod to do this. So I'm like, I'm like, hmm, how has it changed? I don't know. We got a search box. Was there not a search box before? It was it not laid out like this in vanilla. I'm going to have to do like um, previous and like it doesn't it doesn't let us chain things. Is this, is this view different? Yeah. Part of the problem with playing so many mods, I don't know how to compare. Different colors? Maybe. Maybe that's part of it. 
Yeah, search box and not full screen. Anyway, I mean, it's probably it, this that search box looks good to me, so it's probably OK. Oh, oh right. The uh, the health tabs and stuff like that. Um, again, can't quite. It definitely looks a little different if we look at a health tab to me, the font and maybe this layout is a little bit different. But the ad bill, this part, this part mostly looks the same to me. So not not all these things have to be major changes. Uh, there's apparently a change to the prisoner tab, too, but we don't have any prisoners right now to compare to. Um, oh, they said something about the policy as well. Oh, you know what? Yeah, just a little bit of a layout change. I approve. It looks good. Yeah, Rimhud's still going to be a thing for all kinds of different reasons. First of all, it gives you different information over here. And um, yeah, I guess we could just randomly arrest one of our prisoners right away. But uh, we'll, we'll see. Anyway, UI improvements, good. Art improvements, new and improved weapon art. Also add new immature crop art. Relief of this tree art for plants missing those. Cool. Lots of little miscellaneous changes, um, including option to capture carried pawns without having to drop them. I think this is relevant for like... Is this when we like bring a pawn home after we've been traveling, we bring it home? There's, we've had that issue before, but they get into the map, they just drop them and then go back and then the, the pawns get up and then walk off the map. So I suspect that might have something to do with this here. Improved construction hauling, cool, better fighting fighting. Hey, excellent, wonderful. We'll, uh, we'll just pop over to the anomaly page for a second and see if there's anything new that's being highlighted there. And then we're gonna look through the change log. So I suspect this is basically yeah, this is this is the same that was in the in their announcement, actually. Yeah, and the escalate the power of the monolith to access the void in new end game. The end world war in the end, the world will go insane. All will be in darkness as terror squirms and shadows. Feels very uh, the worm, you know, from Stellaris. Only then may you face the machine god and choose your fate. So the like um, the Arco people, right? The Arco Nexus people are like some sort of void gods in Rim World lore or something like that. So I'm assuming this is all related to this sort of thing. All right. Now we got 18 pages of change log notes to happen. This is all base game stuff, not um, not expansion stuff. Books and bookcases. Added books. Colonists can acquire books and read them for recreation. Their unique bonuses. Textbooks increase specific skills. Schematics for certain research projects. Novels increase recreation faster. Added bookcases. So we did read some of this in the previous thing. Books are obtained from traders or quest rewards. Excellent. Wall lamps, floodlights, hidden conduit, couches, and ornate doors. Again, we were just reading that in the other thing. So we got wall lamps and wall torches. It says provide slightly less light. I suspect because they're mostly going to be pro producing it just in, you know, like a hemisphere instead of all around them. Um, I think even the wall light mods that we ran had less light than a, than a floor light because you can put a floor light in the middle of a big room and illuminate all of it. Whereas if you got a big room, even with the modded ones, you needed maybe a couple of wall lights to cover it all. Floodlights for outside, hidden conduits is cool. Couches. Which, I mean, I think is just mostly for aesthetics, but very neat. Uh, ornate door. We do, uh, I did put these in. Um, I just tested it in God mode and they have like 30 beauty or something like that. So they're very nice. They're going to make a room look a lot better. It's all in patch. When the Rim World expansion? It's uh, next month, Boyd. In, in one month is when it comes out. We don't have a specific date except for in one month. Mechanoids can now come out of the water. Yep, yeah, down people can crawl. New Wanderers after game over. Yep, we saw this. Okay, UI and art. We've got the search tool. Yes. Make the colonist moods more visible. Change color and glow. Be do below uh, mental break thresholds. Almost certainly this is doing the same as the colored mood bar mod that I was using before. Uh, I mean, it might look a little bit different, but it fills that role, which is great. The silhouette highlighting when the camera is zoomed out to make pawns more visible. I mean, we could see that right away again if I zoom out all the way. We've got that. And if you prefer the old dots, Rather than these silhouettes, you can switch back to the old dot system. It is just an option in the settings. Okay, 12 and 24 hour clock options. Add a zoom to mouse option when the game zooms towards the position of your mouth instead of center of the screen, right? Okay. Yeah, so I don't know the prisoner tab, but I don't, I suspect it's not major. It's probably they just move some things around rather than change the mechanics, right? Um, art, okay. Clean room command, yes. Mind vein command, yes. Oh, add separate smooth walls and smooth floor designations. OK, I mean, you could do it just by dragging carefully, but now um, it effectively filters that. Sure. Bionic jaw prosthesis or gain organ decay disease. Auto rebuild options on fire foam poppers. That's cool. Add the ability to dismiss traders. Oh, if you really want them off the map for some reason. Add a new options in the world map to easily send caravans. Oh, really? Qu'est-ce que c'est? Oh, look, if I click on the village here, there's a button to send caravan. 
So it's the same as it was like form caravan, then right click, right? I'm, which presumably I could still do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, if I instead do this, send caravan. Okay, just slightly more convenient. Great. Uh, sound effects for animal eating. Jungle noise. Jungle night ambient sound effects. Removes the old high pitched noises. A new warm up sound effect for psychic shock lances. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, improvements and adjustments based game. Ensure human likes are fed first in caravans. Allow capturing carried pawns. Oh, because, yeah, pawns that were car being carried, you probably couldn't interact with them. I think we've seen that before. Aesthetics ignore eight without tables thought. Improved construction hauling. We still don't know what that means, but sounds good. Ensure beggars never show up with a requested item in their inventory. Confused wandering is a max duration of two days. Ah, oh, it's probably a good thing. Non-player faction animals no lord eventually leave the map. Display the target palm is psychically deaf when targeting them with psychic shock lance. Ah, increase target prone accuracy modifier from 20% to 50%. So presumably it's a lot harder to shoot prone targets now. I assume this was a, used to be a 20% penalty and it must be a 50% penalty. Unless prone target, no, this is target. That's not someone who's prone is better at shooting. Bionic stomachs reduce the chance of getting food poisoning by half. Added north and south facing artwork for all desiccated animals. Death on down chance now applies to non-damaged health state changes. Oh, okay. So what this is, um, I don't think this is for colonists. This is for non-colonists. When your colonists go down, like when they get shot and they fall down for some reason, like, you know, they might be bleeding to death, they might have been knocked unconscious or whatever, um, but they're not necessarily dead. Whereas NPCs on the map that get downed have a, a chance to instantly die. The, regardless of, like, normally they might be downed and unconscious and just bleeding to death, except NPCs just always have a chance to instantly die when they get downed. Um, and so now this will apply to non-damage health state changes as well, whatever that might be. Maybe there's like poison or a disease thing. I don't know. Rebalance brawler trait to offset more than mood. Offset skill more than mood. So presumably brawlers might end up with just a lot more melee combat skill. I hope. I really hope. Uh, tending to non-hostile factions improve goodwill. Cool. Killed leavings are deterministic instead of random. All right. Invisible pawns are no, no longer block hostiles from pathing through them. It's probably relevant with the um, invisible hunter that uh, has been added. Added pyro used fire weapon thought. Oh, your pyromaniacs are probably super happy if you give them a flamethrower. That's brilliant. Hot weather and pregnant raiders sometimes self down. Oh, yeah. Improved firefighting, so colonists prioritize putting out nearby fires. Okay, sometimes they do some dumb things. Teetotaler versus chemical interest opinion now only applies to teetotaler trait, not ideology. Starting colonists have a chance to spawn with possessions related to the trait. Yep. Improved research UI, improved policy UI. Changed visuals for tainted apparel. We saw that. Added a corpse color modifier and changed change rotting corpse colors. Because I think corpses and undead are going to be more of a thing. Display progress on research projects in Project Tooltip. Research benches now display research speed factors on the inspect pane instead of work speed. Oh, okay. Click the need research alert opens the research tab. I think, okay. Oh, is if, if we've got a research bench, but no research going, we can probably now click on it and it opens research screen for us. Sure. These are, a lot of these are going to be minor changes. Draw the light radius of torches, braziers, and lamps in yellow and place them selected. Okay. I had noticed that just now when we were placing, um, when I was uh, mousing over, sorry, coming down here. And placing the uh, the wall light, we could see these little these little rate. Oh, that's not the standing light, but still, we can see these radii. Oh, it's the sun lamp. I was like, why was one of these different? I guess the sun lamp probably the that white area is probably the full illumination for plant life, right? And then it casts a lower glow. Okay, that's I yeah, because I don't think that used to be there before. That is kind of handy. And yeah, it looks like the radius on the wall light might be one less. And yeah, this is for the grow. Makes sense. I guess, uh, hold on. If I go into... Is that under general? Development mode, turn on god mode. And furniture. We've got the floodlights here. Ooh, that is a very big area. Yeah. All right. I'll leave god mode on for now. New pawns will always place on the right side of the colonist bar. Good. Allow targeting via the colonist bar. Oh, probably for like convert actions and things like that. Uh, adjust stat name slightly so they fit better in tooltips. Sure. Zones are renamed by the button. Okay. 
Add thought title to thought tooltip in case it's too long for the needed card. Food now shows us ingredients in the tooltip and caravan trade dialogues, probably so that we make sure we don't bring, say, insect meals or carnivore meals or something with us. Ingredients and menus are sorted from highest quantity to lowest. Add research project info to research bench inspection pane. Egg box is a select contain item gizmo. Replace the X button texture with trash can for all delete instances. List efficiency of added parts in point form like other head if effects. Oh, okay. So that's that's the, the health panel. Relabeled misc injury to wound. Remove shot by X and tooltips if the pawn is player controlled and not drafted. Draw subtle background over main menu links to prevent bright backgrounds from rendering them invisible. When using a tech prof persona core, tech prof, bring up the research completed window. Select contain things Gizmo does plays a thing as the icon. Oh, that's cute. Logo, reorganize buildables, hide meditation focus. Okay. Miscellaneous. Allow creating storage groups for single shells by clicking the rename button on the inspect pan pane. Since we're in God mode. So if I select these four. Okay, there's no rename right now. If I select you, there's a rename. Storage group test one building. Hold on. Does that mean if I rename you also to test? Name already in use. Maybe shells weren't nameable before. And now if I go and link you guys, storage group test. There we go. It's quite clear. So this becomes, um, you know, like raw meat. There. Now we know that these shelves are containing raw meat. And they're all named as one group like that. Okay, that's good, because I don't think that used to be clear. And like, oh, you could tell they were linked because of the brackets, but not necessarily remember these rule sets. Okay. Sure. Show message when various abilities cooldown ends. Another mod I don't need. Hey! Underground retreat mentions pawns will be unhappy outdoors. Add an option, increase, decrease the number of autosaves. Long rot moved from biotech to core. Oh, probably because they've got this whole like organ decay system. Infestations now refund, minify any buildings that destroy. That is going to make infestations a lot less annoying. I think they used to be. So bug infestations that spawned in your underground base, I think they would just spawn in and all the furniture in that area would just get effectively deleted. So now you the material stays around or they just like flip over the bed or something and becomes minified so that you can reinstall it or something. That's kind of nice. Your shells have quality. So in I mean, unless they've changed something in vanilla um, Rimworld, they do, although it's, there's no quality being listed here. Unless it's because of the way I built it, maybe in God mode they don't get a quality, or maybe did the quality system on shells get removed? Because I ran a mod to do that. Because I, it was really annoying when you're building shells for stuff, and then your your skill level twenty constructor was making legendary shells and increasing the value of your your place. So instead, what you do is you'd have to micromanage it, take someone with like zero construction skill, and then um, to build the shells so they have no quality. No, you're right. These wooden beds have normal quality. The shelves have no quality. I bet you, we'll see if there's a patch note for it. I bet you they removed the qual quality thing from the shelves. Yeah, because I ran a mod to get rid of the quality because I, it was dumb to like micromanage a shitty person to make a low level shelf to not increase the wealth of your base as much just because you were trying to organize things. I mean, high quality shelves did add to like the beauty of the room, but I mean, honestly, who cares about that? Like, you know, we can find other ways to do it. Utility items shouldn't be. Yeah. Anyway, we'll see if it shows up in the patch notes. Updated bridges be same colors, wood floors, move natural hair color depths from core to core from ideology. OK, so natural hair is now core. Meteor strikes no longer hit monuments. Fires produce light. Fires didn't produce light before. Things to load in transport pods can now be changed at any time. That's nice. Uh, numpad enter scale damage to buildings from fire burn damage by their flammability. Remove some spot building exploits. Don't know what that means. Bomb turret activation cooldown is paused while repressurizing and unpowered. Gas not dissipate slower in roofed areas. Ensure crash ship parts land before the mechanoid drop parts so mechs don't die from explosions. Adjust some backstories. Improve description of the headers for prosthetics. Rephrase grid access stored inspection string for clarity. Okay. 
rid of excess. All right. Improved lighting for roof eaves. Updated flame damage. Roof eaves might be like overhang of roofs outside, which I do sometimes to prevent rain or snow from falling on our walk paths. Do you think they fix your heat deletion exploit? That might be the case. We could try to set up the um, the the cooler exploit, which I haven't even used in like the latest playthrough or anything like that. It's just it's just neat and fun, but we should give it a go. Um, add a resource to make stat for any billables. Create an ingredient stat entry. Uh, add duplicate area button. Hmm. Add, oh, that's actually kind of handy. Uh, so you can you can effectively copy an area and then make a changed one. New core tips. Tinctoria now has a lifespan of twelve days. I'm assuming this is longer than it used to be, because one of the issues with Tinctoria is I think there was a very slim window between when it was fully grown to when it died instantly. It used to have six, yeah. It was really annoying, so you keep getting these messages like, Tinctoria died of old age. It's like, I'm sorry I didn't have like three milliseconds to go and pick it before it rotted. So yeah, that's important. Improvement, okay, it's for royalty. Bestore and guards exit the map more quickly. Increased work to build for braziers. So braziers will build more slowly? Ideology changes. Pawn column not drawn. Disabled mode. Styling stations display favorite and ideology colors with a small icon. Great, because I think we have to we had used to have to keep checking that. Trader inventories try to use the styles available for their primary ideology. Update drug policy records when pawn leaves Biosculptor Pod. Moral guide ability is now wake up sleeping pawns. Okay, because one of the annoying things is you couldn't use a convert action on a sleeping pawn. And now presumably this means we will be able to do that. It's not so much of a problem for your colonists because you could force them awake, but it was annoying for your like, prisoners, right? Your cooldown would come up, but you couldn't use it right away because the prisoner was still asleep. Unlocked by X or Gen X for building styles for memes. Okay, just description change. Select loudspeakers and light bulbs can be switched on and off to save power, I guess. Biotech changes. Adjusted waste pack incident to consider pollution. Made psychic bond distance more permissive. As long as both pawns are on the same map and not suspended, they get the positive thought. Slightly reduce the mass of sashes. Confirmation dialogue when a potential mechanator is incapable intellectual, similar to smithing. Remove reference damage over time. Artwork, textures, stat entry, helpful text. Displayed when a mechanator is required to start the next cycle and gestator inspection screen. Updated fire spew line of sight highlighting. Berserk and similar psychasts no longer work on bosses. Okay, fair. Okay, fair. Yeah. No more, like, effectively disabling the bosses with psychic powers. Ah, Apocritin's Ultra Heavy Weight Class Mech. Updated Psychic Bonding. Clarify pawns with no Xenogenes cannot implant their Xenogerms. Babies in caravans now ignore drug, drug policies like they do on map. Add float menu option. So wait, if you brought babies on caravans with you, would they, like, and, and you had, like, a take Psychic tea every day, would they take it while they were on the caravan? Hmm. Float menu option, take baby to safe location. Dev tools, we'll skip over that section. Right, the pawn rendering changed, implemented asset hot load for developer moder ease. Oh, so presumably this, you will no longer have to restart the game when you're making tweaks to your mods and testing things. Four four maps don't have corresponding world tile. Oh! That's very interesting. Because I think, okay, so added support for maps which don't have a corresponding world tile. What would, with what I assume this means. This map that we're on belongs to this tile right here. These pink is because I have dev mode turned on. Um, I think for things like the mod, um, like the save our ship mod that let you build spaceships out in space. I think what they had to do is effectively like steal one of these tiles over here like the zero zero tile or something like that. And effectively you're secretly building there. So now you could have that, that sort of thing just exist in some sort of void that doesn't map over here. And yes, it might also link in with their endless mazes. Um, it might let them do like dungeons in areas that aren't necessarily mapped to any specific area. It gives you some flexibility. If a, if a map like this doesn't actually have to uh, exist somewhere physically on the world here, it opens tons of possibilities and options for both the game as well as modders that are having to sort of hack things. Add a new virtual relationship record system. Maintains relationship information without bloating save files. Sure. Pawn rendering multi-threaded. Super fast dynamic thing culling system. Uh, support for wall attached buildings. Don't know what this means. Added infection pathway system. These allow for the easy tracking explanation of infections for the purposes of headhouse and incidents. Only used for some anomaly content. 
does not change how the base game infection works. Infection pathways can optionally create a source pawn, kind attach them for extra details. Um, this is probably going to be fun for wallet modders as well. Oh, support for wall attached buildings you think might be for the wall lamps. Okay. I was thinking it might have been if you build a wall and then you can attach a floor to it that hangs over water or something like a bridge. But no, you're probably right. It's probably how they implemented their wall lamps and might open up more options for, for mods again. New music system can change between songs based on current game state. That's cool. I think the music mod might have already done that when there was combat going on. It played a combat song. Optimizations, 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 performance improvement, performance improvement. Decoupled from Silent, allow modders to create other leveled abilities. Oh, neat. Oh, remove the efficiency cap limit. That's cool. Yeah, more things, you know, configurable again for mods and stuff like that. Bug fixes. Many ponds in small space can cause heat to build up forever. That was a bug. Neat. Um, yeah, that was the inverse of what we wanted. So that's nice that that's fixed. Notice trigger need warm clothes alert. Like, I don't know how many of these things are things I've encountered before or noticed or was necessarily bothered why. Oh, interesting. The melee trap stats display is five times as high despite being spread over five hits. Learning rate being applied on tech print XP bonuses. Because yeah, tech prints are supposed to be a static amount of learning. Huh. I wonder if this is causing any issues with animal training. Yeah, I know I'm not reading all these because a lot of them are gonna be pretty small. Rounding shows resistance 0.0, .0 but recruitment isn't available yet. That would be annoying. god there's so many fixes it just goes on and on and on wow all right that's pretty good so should we play a little bit of rimworld let's um let me turn off dev mode here and then just reload bookworms double zero which is what we've got over here we're gonna play with these guys so we did an ideology here i mean books are in vanilla although i suspect there might be more stuff going on with Anomaly, but they exist. So based on a conversation with some Discord people, we made the bookworms here who are collectivists, proselyzer, because there's a book in the uh, in the icon. And then I made them tunnelers so that they would be bookworms. Hey, almost like a paradox game one hour in and not unpaused yet. Oh, we haven't even started playing the game and we're 43 minutes in. But we can go ahead and do a landing here. Let me do a quick unforbid all. And go. There's good. I'm sure we're going to run into things where I'm going to try to do something that's not going to work because we don't have a mod. Um, so we're obviously going to want to tunnel in to somewhere because we are undergrounders. Um, I really wish the the high quality fertile soil was just outside of this big hunk of rock. It's a little annoying that it's not. Yeah, we'll probably have to go and plant some rice over here. And then just enclose this whole area. It's just a few walls here. Enclose this. Have a courtyard. We can use this as a big, uh, a big ranch, maybe. Um, and then we can dig in here so that we can satisfy some more undergrounder things. Nope, bugs are not disabled. Everything is to totally vanilla over here. So um, before I unpause, actually, let me go zone, growing zone. We're gonna make an area like that. Then I'm just going to go and trim out the less fertile soil over here. And I will totally not forget to set it to be a rice plant. How many of you and how many times have I done this on the fertile soil and then forget to change away from rice? Oh yeah, there's that new trash can icon. It's fine. I didn't mind the X, but it's fine. Um, and I mean, potatoes are fine, but they don't, they only have 40% fertility sensitivity, so they really don't benefit from the fertile soil too much. Mm-hmm. 
Do, 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 do. Yeah, you can disable creatures as part of vanilla by not including their faction. But I meant I left I left all, everything on default here. Um, I don't think we wall ourselves in right away. I think we do focus on digging in. Maybe what I do is we dig out this compacted steel and then just wall that off. I mean, if we've got to dig out something, there's the mine vein button. Okay, it doesn't show everything behind it, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. Let me... We'll just build a little generic stockpile here, which will clearly have to be moved after, and then a dumping stockpile. Um, say over here. I'm going to make the dumping stockpile slightly higher priority because I want to include raw resources in there, but not plant matter um, because I don't want that to be in the normal place. So we're going to do that. And then let's take a look at our priorities. We're going to do the standard thing, firefighting at one. I'm going to enable doctoring at one. We don't actually have proper doctors, but so be it. Bed rest on a two, basic on a one. And... Animal handling can really be a one for everyone unless you're actually doing training. It's just a get an animal like penned in or whatever ASAP. But I guess Vass will be. Oh, oh, when I reloaded, I lost my names. Like, that's not what these people are supposed to be um, called. They are supposed to be called new. Potch. And Tist. New Potch Tist. That's what our people are going to be called. Oh, that's a good question. Can we search for compacted steel? Uh, the answer is yes. So all those times where I'm like, where the hell's the jade? Do we have any jade on the map? And I type it in. <gasps> we do have jade on the map. Oh my gosh. Everything is searchable. <gasps> Beauteous. I know I'm covering it again. Uh, let me move over there, but still. There's yeah, this little eye thing, or it's mapped to the Z key. So you just type it in. Uranium. We do have uranium. Cool. I'm still going to want my uh, colorblind minerals mod, but that's not a bad start. Okay, we'll turn off the hunting for now. Construction, you've got the passion for it. we got a lot of people with growing passion, which is nice. Mining passion. Anyone who's got a passion for something, I'm going to set those jobs to a two for now. We'll turn off art. The crafting, hauling, cleaning can also... Actually, we'll put all those at a four, just to say. And then we'll do that. So, Tist might be too busy if we want them to do research. I think it's fine to start. Oh, I guess you might be stuck doing some cooking. Mm. Run. No mods. Yeah, because we're on the 1.5 thing. Theoretically, probably some of the mods will work perfectly fine without an update. But it's a new patch today, new and un unstable patch, and the mods haven't actually been updated for it. A little bit of vom vom going on. Meals over there, a little bit of hauling. That's going to be okay. Do, do, do. Can you find hidden things like cryopods? I, I'm assuming not, because uh, for the jade, for example, when we search for that... Oops. See, it's only revealing three tiles. One, two, and three over here, not the tiles behind it. So if we type in cryo, yeah, nothing. Only searching things that are visible. <laughs> so yeah, tapa, tapa, tapa. Actually, maybe what I'll do is I'll go and build a very quick little wooden wall around this area. Like this, that we can use as initial room. We're not going to build the ornate door, certainly. We'll just do that. And then I'll expand our stockpile zone over here to like that. But we are going to dig it out so that we can get the underground vibe going on. As our mining is keep selecting revealed tiles, it's supposed to. And indeed, that does appear to happen. So this to me is like the um, the vein auto mining from, um, uh, from Dwarf Fortress, right? Now, I tend to use the... DF hacks auto vein tool, which does designate everything visually, which is also how the Rimworld uh, auto mining tool that I used to use would do. It would just show the entire vein. But I'm like, I didn't care. I'm like, that. I don't feel that's very spoilery. But here it works like the built-in Dwarf Fortress one. So when it reveals another tile of the same type, it designates it as well. It's got a neat little icon on it, I'm assuming for that. Materials for the ornate doors. So they require gold. So if we do the wooden version, it's 75 wood and 50 gold, or we can make it out of other materials, certainly. But it's the 50 gold that is needed for the ornate door. And when I tested it in dev mode, I think it gave 30 beauty to the room. So it's quite a lot. And you can put an ornate door between two rooms, right? Another room over here, ornate door between the two, and presumably it gives the benefit to both. And that's that's not a small thing. Um, Oh, it does take up four tiles. So it's a two by one door, but it's a four by one amount of space that it takes up. Yeah, that is fairly substantial. Tap -a -tap -a -tap -a -tap -a -tap tap 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 Okay, we got an ad break coming up, but we'll let, I don't think there's tons of super exciting stuff going on right now, so we'll let it go now. Need colonist beds. Um, 
We actually probably could quickly get some beds up. Actually, hold on. Let me cancel that. And do this, because this is actually very scalable for, for many beds with a um, headrest. Mm -hmm. I did unforbid everything. Oh, sorry. No, I did. Oh, I unforbid anything, I think, before we loaded the game. Unforbid all items. There we go. Uh, where's the... Oh, there's the rifle. Who's our best shootist? Oh, I hate having to click bio. Oh, we've got a couple of good shooters. So new over here is the best, and then Potch is second best, so we'll do that. And Tist has no skill, so we'll give them the knife, the knife. I've run the equipment manager mod so often I'm not used to... Oh my god! Do you have a book? Did you spawn in with a book? Or is it on the ground? The designs of the blacksmithing, legendary. It gives you 80 smithing skill per hour red. And yeah, we did start with a skull. I believe we started the skull because new here's a psychopath. Industrious slowpoke. I wonder if the industrious, I wonder if Potch brought it with them. Or maybe it was Tist, who's too smart, brought a book with them. That might be it. Infinitely. Yeah, but I mean, I don't know how quick this is. Um, smithing, 80 an hour. Well, smithing is just crafting, isn't it? I'm not seeing any XP. Yeah, 80 per hour is not that much. It can get you started. But, I mean, you can, you can get XP a lot faster just by actually doing the thing. But this means you can do it as busy work when you're not um, actually... Um, sorry, words. Uh, when you, you know, without using any material up. So, listen, what do we think of Minerva here? Yorkie is not very useful. I'm just saying. The Smithing Research Project. Oh! Oh, sorry! It's generating research towards smithing without a research table. That's what it's doing. Because there are, there's also a skill books, I think it was saying. I think one of the types of books does give you skills, but this is actually researching towards the tech. Ah! Well, no more killing dogs. Ah, are you bonded? Yes. Okay, hold on. Minerva's fine. They're bonded to Tist. Because we're not playing human supremacists, so the animal starts bonded to someone. All right. No butchering the puppy. Um, rice has been planted. That's good. You could also get some berries. You know what? It might be worth harvesting a few berries just to minimize the, the eating of the survival meals. Um, in terms of food policies... Oh! I have a complaint. I have a complaint about this. It is no longer clear... Okay, so here's a complaint. This list is alphabetical. But the policy that is set by default is the first policy in the list. In previous to 1.5. Um... When you loaded up this the food policy and you clicked on the thing, it was in an order, which was not alphabetical, but the first thing in the list represented the thing that everyone got by default. And here it's still lavish. It, it was lavish before, but lavish was first in the list. And lavish is clearly what's being said as default, but you have to double check that and be like, right. So I'll do the thing that I always do, which is I rename lavish to default to make it super clear. Now, I like that it's alphabetical, with that one caveat of it's not clear which one is the default, right? Except that I guess double checking. Same thing with the drug policies. So social drugs, again, I will rename this to be default so that we know which one is being applied to all pawns immediately. Um, and I guess for apparel, it's the same thing. Anything is the default. Here it happens to be at the top of the list, but it's purely coincidental. So we'll go ahead and do that. Manage reading policy. How come? Okay, so I could block schematics or, you know, and anything that gives you crafting or whatever. In case we want to, I, I'm assuming this is mostly useful for when we want to make sure that the books are available for the right person. We don't want the wrong person like sort of occupying it. 
Yeah, I mean, you can put it. You can put an asterisk, and maybe that's all the game should do. Maybe the default policy, the one that gets applied by default, should have a little asterisk after it, or be in a different font. You know, be bolded, right? Like if I hadn't renamed this, right? The the word lavish should have brackets around it or a star or be bolded or something just to make it explicitly clear which one is on by default. Or maybe there should be an option to change what the default policy is. Well, they clearly something like, no, what it is, I think internally these are represented by an array and it's the first thing in the array, the zeroth item in the array. The first thing in the array is the default. Basically, when someone joins the map, they have like they have a thing. It's like, what is my policy ID? OK, I'm using policy zero. I'm using policy three or whatever to the array. Um, so they always just get set to zero, which would used to be the first thing. The visual display is sorting it alphabetically, but internally it's still got a numeric ID. That has nothing to do with the order of it in the visual display. So we got trees. New. Why aren't you constructing a little faster? OK, you're going to cut down that tree now, which is fine. I do miss and I kind of wish this might. I think this is something that could go into vanilla. Not every mod, even mods, I say I can't live without it. Not every one of those should be in vanilla because sometimes they add an extra level of complexity or anything like that. But there is a mod that I used. I don't remember what it's called. It might be called like don't cut trees for, or cut trees first, or it might be better construction, although that might be something that's something else that does it when you place a construction on a tree, because here's what's happening. New wants to construct this bed, but there's a tree in the way. So new has to go and cut down that tree. But new sucks at plant and plant is what is used for cutting down trees. So we don't actually want new to cut down this tree. Instead, if I move her aside, we want ideally potch, right? We want someone who's got plant cut as a duty, <laughs> duty to cut down this tree, but they don't unless we click chop wood. Now potch can go and cut down this tree and will, which and is much better because Potch will cut it down faster and presumably get more wood, I think, out of it as well. Look how much faster Potch is at that, right? I think in vanilla, they should change it to work like the mod, where if you put some construction down on top of a tree, it should issue the chop command on that tree so that one of your planters goes and does it instead of one of your constructors. That's all. That's all it should be. I mean, internally, it could it could um, specify it as a second job or whatever like that. But all it does really all the mod does is if you put down any kind of construction, even a wall, right? If I build a wall like this, if you plop down a construction on top of a tree, it just goes and clicks that button automatically so that a plant cutter will come and cut down the tree. If a plant cutter doesn't get around to it, your constructor pers person will eventually get go and do it anyway. But this gives you a chance to do things much, much faster. So I think that should probably make it into vanilla at some point, but we do have a mod for it, so it's not a huge deal. Mm -hmm. Again, I don't remember if that's a solo mod or if it's part of better construction or what. But it is one of the mods I use often. So should get an animal sleep spot in the room too, right? I mean, come on. And actually, I think this dog's probably small enough that it can do the sleep box. Totally unnecessary use of 25 wood. But you know what? Our pupper, if we're going to keep them around, and apparently we are, then we're going to treat them well. <laughs> Maybe block reading uh, books made of human leather with strange ruins uh, uh, into the cover. It's fine. All you've got to do is say the right phrase first and it's OK. It's Klaatu Barakta Necktie. Something like that. Then you're fine. Just say the words. And I got to rewatch uh, Army of Darkness. There you go. A little bit of hauling from Potch. So what can we train you with? You can train you with an attack dog. An attack Yorkie actually seems terrifying. Maybe we should do it. Do 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 do. What do you think? Should we do anything else ASAP? Well, we should probably get some sort of cooking thing going on. Um. Let's set up some power and a um, neutral pace dispenser. Where do you want to set the power? Maybe I'll just build it next to the building over here. Sure. Well, yeah, um, where's some heal root? There's some heal root. I do miss the um, my my mod, which I think is part of the allow tool mod. Um, that gives you the harvest fully grown button. 
Because you can harvest anything that I think is at least 50% grown. See, this one's 87%. So I know with trees, you'll get less wood. I think with the plants, there's just a chance that you just don't get anything if you harvest it too early. And I do, I do kind of like that. This one's ready to harvest. These, not so much. I should cancel here. This one's ready to harvest, ready to harvest, ready to harvest. Okay. But it's annoying to like do that manually. <gasps> There's the Hinden Conduit, which tastes twice, twice as much steel. But the fact of the matter, because it has a game benefit, the Hidden Conduit is less vulnerable to explosions and fires and stuff like that, that I'm totally okay with it taking more metal. Although in this case, I'm just going to go a regular Conduit because it's early and things are a little bit tight. We'll do that. And then can I build a wall lamp? Oh, okay. Building here. Am I wrong with the wall lamp mod? Were you placing it on the wall itself instead of adjacent? I don't remember. You can see it auto rotates. That's cool. Mm. Are there plans for more Kerbal? No plans currently, but I do want to do more. And I do think Kerbal 2 is in a fine and playable state. Although part of me is like, I don't know, maybe we just go and do some more Kerbal 1 with a lot of mods because they're pretty awesome. You place directly on the mall, uh, wall with the mod. That's what I thought. That's why like my, my reflex. So I assume that's what it was because of muscle memory. And I was like, hey, it's not working. But no, here you place it adjacent. In turbine, we're going to go auto cut. Keep those out of the way. Yeah, about support for items on walls. Sounds like mods were workaround. Yeah. I suspect things like the um, the over the wall coolers and over the wall vents that some of the mods had were also using similar hacks to like the wall lamp thing and which may or may not have been accurate. The other thing, too, is with the wall lamp mod, you couldn't build um, opposing wall lamps in one go because you could click on one and put it. And then once it was built, then you could click and put one on the other facing. Now, the fact that it's on these tiles here, I could I can queue up opposing wall lamps immediately. So I think this is a better system. But rip one of the most popular, well-known, and most beloved mods there is, the wall lamp mod. Officially obsolete. Well, unless, I mean, for people who are continuing old playthrough. So, with the underground, I haven't really played with it too much. You can sit, you think you're outdoors right now? Oh, you've been outside too much recently. Well, we'll see what we can do to keep you indoors as much as possible. I'm, re I'm really sorry about that. How's the temp? Temp is fine. Could use a little bit of cooling, but it's not a big deal. Uh, we can't move this after it's built, which is a bit annoying, because ideally I'd like to this to be part of a freezer later and then use the wall. Unless I reserve that space immediately. I guess I could still build it here with the idea that, you know what, we'll we'll turn this little section here into a freezer later and just make this into an entrance hallway. I guess, you know what, we'll, we'll do that. You know me, I actually have normally am not actually that big of a fan of the nutrient paste dispenser, unless, of course, we're playing um, transhumanists because they don't care about it. Uh, but it does save a lot of it at time. So let's go ahead and do that. In terms of research, the very first thing I'm going to want is batteries. There you go. And yeah, we probably want to set up a at least one research bench quite quickly. Get that down over there. Mm -hmm. Doodly, do, 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 do. I might, do we need more rice than this? 46 rice plants. I think I think about 15 tiles per person is fine, depending on growth days. 40 to 60. I think we actually will need more if we want to stay ahead of the winter. I think we might want to go up to about 20 tiles per. There you go, now it's 65. There, that's gonna be okay. All right. Oh, um, and I did, uh, one of the things I talked about at some point, I don't know if that's, this has come up yet in the Let's Play, but one of the things I talked about in the Let's Play was, hey, I wonder if there's a, an order to what hopper the food gets removed from in the nutrient space dispenser. And turns out there is, which is very powerful. So this tile here, which is, let's say you're facing the nutrient paste dispenser, right? It's the tile to the left. In this case, it's the tile to the right from where we're going. But if you're sitting in the, the spot and facing the dispenser, to the left, this is the first one taken. 
Then it goes counterclockwise. So it would be here, then here, 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 here. And then this is the last hopper that food is taken from. And this is very useful because let's say we built two. The This hopper here, assuming I haven't effed up from my memory here, this hopper here is going to get used before this one. So what I want to do in this hopper is make this one the critical priority, but only use meat, which rots very quickly. So if we do any hunting, the meat will get dumped in here. And then if someone takes a nutrient paste meal, they will take it from this and consume the meat, which can rot very, very fast. Huge pro tip. Huge pro tip. So um, there, there will be, uh, I don't know, whatever, at some episode, in the current playthrough, I will start asking about that. And then I'll say it for a couple episodes in a row because I keep meaning to check between episodes and I don't. And finally, I'm like, oh, so I, ch I check in the episode, configure it, and it works beautifully and perfectly. I mean, if you stared at it, you could be able to tell which ones like the number went down. So, you know, you could have I could have found out without having to look it up, but you have to be watching at exactly the right time for when they take the meal. Notice the number of all the stacks, although it's easier if they all start at 75. So there you go. So this should be set up this way. And then we've got decent hunting skills. Well, we got decent shooting skills with new over here. If we tell new, you can be a hunter. And then for our wildlife. Oh, I don't have the mods that show me meat. Because what I like to do for this is I just sort by meat and then pick the most meatful thing that doesn't have an aggro thing. Um, we'll, we'll hunt some of the gazelles, let's say. So let's hunt a couple of you. So you should do that once they reevaluate their work. There we go. Going to go hunt the gazelles. Oh, we need a butcher's table. Herp or derp. Uh, I'm going to put it outside because it's bloody. I know it's like outdoor work penalty. I don't normally find it too bothersome. Um, there is no wind whatsoever. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Now, the one downside to hunting with a long range weapon is when they hunt, they want to be at the maximum range because um, the further away you are from an animal, the less likely it is to decide to attack you uh, while you hunt. But the problem is your people are really inaccurate and it actually is often better to have them hunt with a short range weapon. Uh, assuming you're hunting things, you're not worried about um, turning on you and attacking you because they're just going to be so much more accurate. As I say that, don't you have good? You're an eight. Oh my god. Get your ass over here. Oh, hunting in the rain is a debuff? Are you gonna leave the map? Hunting with uh, grenades is actually pretty useful. Weather, 80%. Yeah, okay. Only 30% chance to hit right now. Hey, there we go, finally. As long as they get hit once, yeah, they'll, they'll bleed to death, so... We can actually stop the hunt at this point. Uh, I think we will have to unforbid the body, though. Rifles have pure power accuracy up close. Oh, do they have a min range modifier? Oh, yeah, they're optimal at short range or medium range. And that I mean, OK, so clearly this rifle is not the ideal hunting wing. I'm actually wondering if it might be better to for us to hunt with just the uh, the pistol. But anyway, let's not worry about it too much. Typically, if hunt is on the body's allowed. Oh, even if it bleeds death? Okay. Do, 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 do. See, we don't need all this metal, but I just figure we want to be more underground. So let's be underground and we'll, we'll go ahead and get that going. Okay, a little bit of power. We'll need this. I think is... Oh, man, I really... Uh, yeah, you're hunting the grizzle. I really um, do miss the uh, the rim HUD already, just to be able to see skills at a glance without opening the bio panel. We'll put Pacha's construction on just temporarily because you're actually not too bad at it. That'll make sure to get this, and I'll put a bill in here. Butcher creature, do forever. Thank you very much. And you know what? While I'm thinking about it, I'm going to put a kibble job in here. Do until you have, I don't know, 100 kibble. And just meat. If you've got hay and meat do that and actually we could put a job here for human things actually i think i think i put cannibalism okay for this group of people 
it at the top? Cannibalism. Acceptable. Yep. So one thing we can do with these hoppers, they are disabling human meat. We can turn that off. Keep the... Oh, and even insect meat is fine with us, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, if we have any prisoners, they'll be un upset about this, but deal with it. Doo -doo -doo. So we got some fungus in there. Did we start with fungus, I guess, because of our cave dwelling things? Who the heck are you? Do we want to arrest you? You're a cannibal. You've got some nice skills. Reset your actions. Quickly go and build this, please. No, don't go to bed. There's a room. 29%, 83%. Okay, we're gonna get people out here. Try to rest. Nice. All right, so we've upset some people. Deal with it. So, oh, I can select. Yeah, I can select the person being carried now. Did you drop all the shit you were carrying for trade? I've never, I've never tried to just arrest one of these people before. That's nice. Um, can I? Hold on. Forbid this. Haul this because it's currently in the way. There we go. Hello, zero. Whoa. Okay. New prisoner AI or UI. Medicine, stats. Okay, stats are being displayed the same. These these options are the same, but they are ordered in a different way. And the Hemogen Farm is its own exclusive button now. I mean, it was still it was still an option that was there, but it's presented differently now. Okay. Um. We don't have much in the way of social skill. I don't know. What's your ideology? Are you a problem? No, you're fine. We can convert you later on. So nice interface. So yeah, we're just going to go and set it on recruit immediately. Can you human gen farm while converting? <laughs> Maybe. I guess there's no feeding target button. Maybe we need a sanguophage to say, because there was two options really for the blood stuff. There was one to say, this is someone to f you can feed from all the time. And hemogen farm was make blood packs. But here we don't have the, it's okay to feed from you constantly button, but maybe it's because we don't have a sanguophage. What's your ideology like? Are you a problem? I totally identify as a problem. Negative, I am a meat popsicle. Yeah, convert then recruit isn't in vanilla. And I mean, I think that's fair because it's a UI that adds a little bit more complexity and you know, that I think that's fine to not be in vanilla. But Potch, can I get you to... Let's reserve for prisoners, interesting. Well, you know what? It'll save us time from having to feed you. Um, That is actually annoying. What if I didn't want you to consume these meals? It was reserved because you dropped it in the prison room. I just wanted to make sure to feed these guys from the nutrient paste dispenser right away. <gasps> Draft? Nope. I can tell you to consume it. But I can't get you to pick it up. Hmm. Yeah, I could undesignate this as a prison room, then haul it, then redesignate it. I don't know if it would break the capture. Well, well, let's not worry about it. Yeah, I often don't build electricity this early, but we did this time. Sure, why not, right? Now, our best researcher is Tist. I'm going to take down your mining priority by one. I still want you to grow at, like, maximum priority. 
and cook as well, which is mostly just butchering. But if I recruit, unrecruit you, Tist, why aren't you researching? Did I not? Did I not activate the battery research? Oh, okay. Oh, do we not have a warden? Oh, we don't have a warden. Thank you. Wow, everyone. Yeah, we don't have anyone with passion. Uh, doesn't really matter who we set on. It's best to focus on someone. There you go. We'll do Potch. Um, just because then they they get all the social skill. But it is kind of gonna suck if they're not actually good at it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Does research skill, skill uh, affect books? I don't know. That's a good question. Man, it is not a windy area. And we got a mad gazelle. Although, I guess this is the guaranteed one mad animal right away, right? Because I am playing on Cassandra Classic. Although, I should probably go to Randy Random. I enjoy Randy Random much more. All right, Tist, you're going to come out a little bit and hopefully do a little bit of kiting for us. Actually, I should get people to come out like this so we can maybe kite in a bit of a circle. Where's the mad gazelle? There it is. Not sure I love that purple. Okay, now the hard mode. Don't shoot Tist in the back of the head. All right. Oh, you're not coming for me. Scatter. Are you going for you? No, now you're going for Potch. Okay. Oh no! Potch has been caught! Who knew gazelles were fast? Just stab it a few times. Watch, come over here. You move up a little bit. Okay, now you should be following Tist. There you go. No! You're not a slowpoke, are you? I think Potch might have been a slowpoke, actually. I mean, also, gazelles are fast. Oh my god! Thank you. Whew. How badly injured are we? Uh, we've got doctoring turned on for a couple of people. Oh, po either Potch or Tist are gonna have to self um, tend. You know what? I'm gonna enable it for both. It's fine. Here, reset yourselves. Physician, heal thyself. <laughs> Minerva just watching your humans panic. That's why we gotta train Minerva for war. Let's do it. Attack training, go, go. Just want to reveal that. Can't the Yorkie run up and yap the gazelle would be useful? I mean, as a distraction, yeah. You're being brought there. Someone will butcher you relatively soon. And then we'll get more meat in here. And yeah, it's spoiling quite quickly. We've got power. We could set up refrigeration, but I'm not going to rush that, especially without a battery. But our battery research is underway. Good. Let's do bedrooms. I mean, the big barracks, especially a high quality barracks, is actually like so strong and such a good way to go. And it reduces um, a lot of like wealth things and stuff like that. But I want some rooms. Now, our people with their ideology don't mind small spaces. Does that mean they don't need as much space for their bedrooms? Never really played with the tunnelers before. Hey, Quill, pay attention. There's a new subscriber. No juice for Chris. Uh, are you strictly a milk drinker? <laughs> Thanks for the sub. So we're going to assume maybe let's say we assume this might be the freezer later. So I'm going to reserve that space. I'm just going to go and block that area off. Maybe I'll plan a little hallway here. And then build some bedrooms in there. Now, ideally for bug defense, you make a hallway three wide, but that represents a lot of space being occupied here. And bugs do spawn in the bigger areas. So I don't think it'll be the bedrooms later on. Let's do four by four. These are still fairly spacious, but less spacious than a regular colony colonist would need. Or maybe this one can be five by three. And this 
theoretically is enough room for a double bed, the end table, and a dresser. So they can still have all their stuff. Dak, thanks for the gift subs. Much appreciated. Wiki says they don't care at all about small space, but still enjoy big ones. Okay. So they still get good thoughts from having a big bedroom. Of course, the bigger the bedroom, the higher the quality as well. But we'll be a little more space efficient here. We got some visitors from the coalition of ghosts. Aren't they the people that I upset? No, these are the tribals. Okay. So we have upset the um, the industrialized people over here. Although it will eventually go back to zero. And we're still friends with the tribals. Let's not upset them right now. Although really upsetting the tribals is fine. Normally I'd be fine with it because the if the ho the tribals are hostile, then they're in the pool of people who can attack you, which actually minimizes the chance of being hit by mechanoids. Although there will be massive numbers of tribals. Smithing just finished for free from us reading the books. How lovely. So I'm assuming this means we could sell this book now because we don't need it, right? From stealing the trader, do we do something else? It was just, yeah, just arresting this this trader here. How hard are you? Yeah, your resistance isn't so bad. Now, if we're not doing conversion, we'd ideally, ideally actually like you in a better room um, because being in a good mood makes it easier to recruit you. Maybe what we'll do is we'll temporarily make this room into a prisoner room first. 11 tiles general, best number for the building. 11 uh, by 11 internal space is the biggest room you can have without needing an extra support. And yet generally, when I'm being just sort of optimal try hard, what I do, oh, what are we gonna call ourselves here? Well, our faction is just gonna be the bookworms. What's our, what's our base? What's our colony here? A new chapter? Chapterville! The library. La bibliothèque. Bibliotheca, says Gamer Werters. Chapter one, Library Alpha. I kind of like Library Alpha. Or Library Prime. There you go. That's going to be our settlement. Alexandria would be cool too. Um, there was something else I was going to respond to that I can't remember. Oh, 11 tiles. Right, yeah. So um, when I'm sort of in, you know, actual try hard mode, my structures what you do is you make, so the outer wall is 13 by 13. Right. The inner space is 11 by 11 and then you don't need any supports. So it's great. And actually you can extend this. What you could do is make something that's I think it's 25 long. Right. Yes. Yeah, because that's. 13 plus 13 minus one because of no internal wall. You can do this. Uh, it, you can't quite do a corner because if you do a corner like this with no wall, there's like the central tile over here is too far away from anything to need a, a, a roof. So, yeah, a lot of times I make my bases. Uh, just based on this 13 by 13 grid, uh, which is very efficient, but sometimes can be boring. So I'm intentionally doing things a little more loosey goosey on this one here. Tap, 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 tap. Okay, let's also square off our little room here. There we go. Just still researching. I don't think queuing is part of the game yet. What do you research next? I mean, I always go battery first. A lot of times I will go solar panel as well, because one wind turbine, one solar panel is really good for consistent power. We got a gift from these visitors. Another revolver? Well, Tist, I know you don't have any shooting skill, but you don't have any melee skill either. So what the heck? Let's give you another revolver. Are we playing the uh, the West World again? It kind of feels like it. You know what mod I miss right now is the uh, auto haul chunks. If it's in your home zone, it automatically gets designated for hauling. I missed that mod. All right, so New's gonna do all the uh, the mining for us because she does have passion for it. Transport pod crash. A head butler named Moses. Oh, he's from the Empire. Okay, I don't think we want to go to war with the Empire, so we are not going to capture you. I will put down a random sleep spot and then another one right next to it that's flagged for medical. Uh, Tis, could you come out and rescue Moses over here? 17 hours, yeah, okay. We can we can bring you back to base before treating you. That's going to be fine. But yeah, I don't want to upset the Empire by capturing this person. Ancient danger, right? What I like to do for the ancient danger, just as a reminder. Is it going to planning mode? And I designate it as dangerous. Put the big D in there. 
if only we could write books I could repeat my favorite mod to run in vanilla. Yeah, I actually ran, I can't remember, I think it was in Westworld. I did run one of the mods that lets you write books. We never got around to it. There's too much to do. I never got around to actually having people uh, write books, uh, which is a shame. And yeah, it would be interesting as a mechanic. I assume that people will probably either modify that existing mod or make another one that will let your own colonists write books. Because right now, the only way to get books is through trading and quests, they say. Apparently, our, our people are simply not creative enough. Oh, yes, the clean room button. There it is. Clean barracks. Clean the whole room in one go. That's beautiful. I really appreciate that. Let's plan to slap down some batteries over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and make sure there's a roof overhang happening here of, say, at least four tiles. because We might want four batteries. We'll just extend this out here. Get that functionality in real life. That functionality does exist. You can get up right now and clean your room. But it sucks. Okay, yeah, some meat rotted away, which is always going to be a problem here. We're not going to be consuming enough quickly enough, especially if the power is inconsistent. The problem is right now we can't use a nutrient paste dispenser. Yeah, we're only getting plus three of a change, although we do have crap for social skills. So um, recruiting is going to be hard. One of the things that's going to be great about recruiting zero is their great social skill. Mm hmm. Should you sell the books or revert? Yeah, I guess you're right. We shouldn't sell books. Although for a library, maybe we should lend them. Interestingly enough, a, in French, at least French for me and where I grew up and things like that, a librairie was a bookstore, whereas a bibliothèque was the li a library where, you, you know, the municipal thing where you lend books. But a librairie was a bookstore. One of the many cases where growing up bilingual was very confusing. Oh shit! The roof is in turbine zone. Thank you. Being raided by the pollution team! Attacking immediately. This is the first raid, so it is going to be the... The guy with the melee weapon. Does he even have... Oh, yeah, he's got a knife. All right. Skater boy. Scabrock. Recruit. We'll just meet you out here somewhere. And hopefully... Where are you going? I say hopefully you'll go down in the hail of bullets. Oh, first shot! Already bleeding to death. We could kite forever here. Except we know Potch is slow, so that wouldn't necessarily work. I think we just stand our ground and just keep shooting. 13 hours. Nice. Success. You're from Quebec? No, I'm from Northern Ontario, which is a big Francophone population. Franco-Ontario culture is distinct from, from Quebecois or anything like that. <laughs> with, its own, with its own accent, speech pattern. A lot more archaic word. Talked out of it before. Um, there were like many of my family members. So if you speak French, uh, the word, the French word for a bucket, you know, a thing that holds water is a so, which is spelled S E A U. And it was always weird. Some of the, my older family members would pronounce it C O. And I thought, weird. Why are you mispronouncing the word like that? It turns out they weren't. That is actually like, I mean, those letters that exist in that word S E A U used to be pronounced. And it turns out that Northern Ontario French has a lot of very anachronistic things going on with it. Mm -hmm. Battery research done. So yes, what do you research next? I, I might get the solar panel just for the consistent power. But then after that, I mean, do you, are you someone who goes for early Devil Strand or Cycloid Brewing? I mean, you need good plant skill for Devil Strand. And it's got a while before it pays off, but it can be good. Psycho Brewing is really good for early mood. You go early armor? Do you go right up into machining? Beer? Oh, I want to do the high priority hall button, but that's not a thing that exists. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, Lentilka. The reason we're playing this today, we actually, I'm on the 1.5 unstable patch. We did have a big discussion about the new DLC, and I'm really, really hyped for it. I feel like I'm going to be nervous and scared and die a lot in it, but that's going to be okay. All part of the funsies. Yeah, I've heard that some of the um, like Southern American English like things that we consider to be improper or oddities or whatever may actually be um, just 
has have some similarities with how English was actually spoken at that time. They're not so much affectations as just archaic stuff. <laughs> Solar power for consistent power. Well, I mean, this, it's consistent every day, right? Because the wind is variable, and if it's just if you have solar, one solar panel, one solar panel and one wind turbine, um, between the two of them and one battery, you're pretty much set power-wise for a long time. Because barring an eclipse, you're going to get some amount of sun every day, and then you might get double up power with the wind turbine at night, uh, during the day, which is probably too much, but it can keep you going during the night. And between the two of them, anyway, they'll recharge your batteries pretty quick, and yeah, you're usually in a pretty good stable situation. Am I missing some setting or something else of the tending pawns? Because I can't tend pawns who are not in bed. Um, I think you have to recruit, right? To recruit someone in place, you have, or so, sorry, to, to tend someone in place, you recruit someone and then you can right click on them and then do the, the tend without medicine, right? Yeah, I think that's what it is. Pretty sure it's something um, Twitch chat actually had to coach me through <laughs> to finally get. Oh, you know what I hate? Okay, I can deconstruct you, but let's find a larger piece of debris. Oh, and yeah, see, so remove this by attacking it. Oh, I hate it. I hate it. <sighs> Why? And I was, I really thought for the next patch, I really thought with 1.5 that the devs were going to be like, you know what? It sucks and it's stupid to micro, uh, micromanage having to attack each one of these individually. And we'll just let you deconstruct it or something like that. Ugh. I use a mod called Tweaks Galore that gives me the ability to issue a deconstruct command on these things because I hate being like, okay, hold on, punch this one. Oh, are, oh, oh, you're done? Oh, you've been sitting there recruited for the last five minutes, starving to death because I didn't realize you were done. Oh, oh, okay. Well, sorry about that. It's shooting practice, but you can also just, you know, shoot anything. You can shoot at chunks, I think, right? Remove them in death mode. So luckily, where we're setting up our base, there's not a whole lot in the way, so we're okay. Like, I don't mind. It's like, no, well, I'll let the pawns use up some of their time. You know, hell, make the animation, make the deconstruct animation, them punching it, just like if they were mailing it. But, or, you know, give me a button that is some sort of, like, attack this command or something. But don't make me micromanage with, like, the recruit, the this. Ugh. I mean, we can deconstruct these ship chunks. So why can't I deconstruct an ancient giant wheel? Yes, Heinen apparently was waiting for us to start a YouTube series to announce 1.5. Because I started recording it on Sunday. Like, Sunday, a lot of times it's sort of my day off because Saturday's long stream and we stream again on Monday. So a lot of times Sunday as I try to be a little bit more low-key, but I really felt like playing RimWorld. I'd been wanting to start a new Let's Play for a while. So Sunday I was like, screw it, I'm recording it. I actually recorded, I think, four episodes on Sunday and then I recorded three more episodes Monday morning. And then just after I finish that session of recording on the Twitters, Tynan teases the expansion. I'm like, are you kidding me? And based on the image, I was like, it almost feels like there's a little overlap with what I'm doing. OK, there's there looks like there's less archaeology in Anomaly than I expected. But still. <sighs> yeah. On the other hand, maybe everyone's going to be hyped about RimWorld right now. There's going to be more people looking for a Let's Play, and maybe I'll get more attention on the Let's Play. Maybe it's all going to work out great. It is kind of funny, though. An archaeologist run, too, makes me so happy. Hey, Signet, yeah! Da -da 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 -da. I mean, I don't know how archaeology it will feel. That, don't, don't get attacked by the warg there as you leave the map. Um... Okay, but the anomaly with all the research you're going to have to do is going to maybe successfully touch on that. But we are looking for that Arquinexus, and we're going to try to keep kind of a vibe of archaeology going on. We'll poke our nose and maybe more of the ancient dangers or something like that. There you go. We got a relationship boost for the Empire, which I don't think is going to matter. Although, it's a good question. Do we want to go Royals in this run? So what I should do, first of all, is actually with Cola, I will accept Goodwill to maybe offset the hostile. But otherwise, I don't usually look for the, uh, the Goodwill boost. Um, because I'd rather be represented with three, like, physical rewards instead of a goodwill one. Do we accept honor? You know what? Sure. Now, I don't know if this Let's Play here is going to be particularly long-term. You know, we did it mostly so we could talk about the new patch and things and explore some of that. 
but I don't know if I want to have two RimWorld Let's Plays going on simultaneously. Archaeology, in the archaeology run, anything you find needs to be flagged as being for ritual purposes. <laughs> you enjoy good pop culture archaeology trope too? I mean, yeah, man. Like, Indiana Jones, baby. Mmm, flash storms. That's gonna be fun. Shit's on fire, yo. Okay, how do we summon some rain? Oof. You know, I kind of want to blame Randy, but we're not on Randy. I'm going to switch my storyteller. Uh, we, I mean, we got to go with our favorite, Randy Random. I'm only middle tier difficulty for this, just because I didn't want to, like, have too much problem. Wash your car. There you go. That's the way to summon rain. That is true. Um, there's a, there is, it has been diminished. It used to be like this much fire on the map would instantly bring rain. Um, they did tune that. I think it still does if there's a lot. I mean, I'm not, we can't put out all these fires. Oh my god, our crops! Okay, well, I will go. And I was going to say, there should be a home zone around our crops. I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit more here so that we do actually try to fight the fire to stop it from getting there. And we're, we're still just going to have to wait and hope that the rain comes in time. Protect the crops. So in theory, the firefighting uh, pathing has been optimized a little. <coughs> Need new DLC to summon the gun. It needs all good and well, but the money. Ah, oh, yes. I have to rewatch that. It has been so long. Minerva has the plague. The plague. See, this, this is why we butcher our dogs. Just saying. All right. I'll try to keep you alive. Oh, my God. The fire's creeping in from the other side. Come on, rain! Oh my god. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Randy, give it the... Oh yeah, we switched to Randy and immediately get the plague. Awesome. Well, there's less grass now, so it might not spread as quickly. Come on, rain, please! Oh, look at the colored mood bars! Built in. Look at them go! Quest available. The ambush name. This is fine. You're followed by a man hunting squirrel. Sure. Who wants the honor? Uh, nor. Oh, hold on. Normally, I give the honor to someone who's got social skills. Um, we don't have anyone with that. Maybe I just turn this one down. I mean, it's going to be easy, but who cares about the honor? <gasps> rain. Here comes the rain again. And a man hunter pack. Listen, Randall. Randall, what are you doing, my dude? Man hunting hares. Okay, two of them. Okay. Sleep, 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 sleep. Sleep, sleep, sleep. Wake up. Let's let's sit back here. Try to give us as much distance, because they'll probably come through here. Get some line of sight. Yeah, honor means socket pyros, which is good. I guess we can just give it this. Should we just give it to new? They're first on the list. They're a psychopath. We can have a psychic psychopath. Yeah, you know what? I do like that, actually. Here, join now. We're already uh, ready to shoot. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Kill it, kill it, kill it faster. What is this? Watership down? Okay, we are gonna have to spread out a little bit because we need our people to keep gunning. Pissed, you're probably gonna have to be the kiting target. Well, it sort of worked. Oh, good, they're both falling Tist. Excellent. Run, Tist, run! Run! Oh my god. Turns out rabbits are quick too. It's weird, it's not like they have like some sort of like societal mimetic thing where we think of rabbits as being really fast or anything like that. Shoot it! My God! Thank you. Now, that squirrel joined over here. All right. Tist, are you okay? You're fine. You're gonna be fine. Walk it off! All right, here it comes. I'm happy you're hiding. You have a word of love power? Can I use it? Hang on a sec. Oh. Oh, 
news male. The hair confused me. Oh, they're all male. And none of them are gay. Dang it. I wanted my love story to get started. Oh. I'm so disappointed. What's that joke about the like receding hairline? And that, like a hairline hair restoring. There's a couple of different jokes and puns about like a rabbit and something with a hairline. Game needs a real bromance. I agree. All right. Get in the ship. All right, we can do ceremonies and stuff. Yeah, well, let's hold off on that for a second here. Build a new bed in here. We'll make it nice. And this and this, and it'll be a prisoner room temporarily. And then, oh yeah, we'll have to do some smoothing. Oh yeah, then there's two different smoothing buttons. Or... Are they? The patch notes said there would be a smooth wall and a smooth floor button. And I don't see it. Now, that being said, I also said, I don't know if that was necessary. Maybe they changed their minds. Or maybe they didn't make it into this exact patch and it'll be in the next one. We do need to smooth some of this, though, because we need to let the power come through this. Although some of this is going to be mined out later. You know, maybe I should just do that now. Hold on. I think this is going to become the fridge. So well, I'll tell you what, I'll mine out this line because so we can run power through here now. Because, yeah, I think what's going to happen, this is going to get walled. Well, this is already part of the wall. I guess, hold on. Is what I'm going to do build a wall here because this acts as a wall. I build a wall here and then put the hoppers inside what's going to be the fridge. Yeah. So, okay. Anyway, mining this aside is fine. So we're going to make this into the prisoner room. And there is still in vanilla no way to just move a prisoner from one to the other. So I think all we do is we remove this bed. Right. And can't we... Who's the warden? Oh, Potch is the, the warden. There you go. Take zero to bed. There we are. So we'll be placed in the nicer room. We'll smooth this out. Uh, we'll put a light. I mean, I guess I can build the light now, even though it won't be powered. We may as well wait, I suppose. Um, also, I forgot we got our battery tech. So let's build that. Yeah, there you go. Just as I do that, Big Bad Sheep says, you research battery, didn't build one yet. Just noticed it because we're getting a power brown out again. I was like, hold on a second. I do wish I could queue things in vanilla. So I'll probably still use one of my research mods. Because being able to queue research is really helpful. And also, the research mods tend to do better. If you've got a bunch of mods that add a bunch of text, um, it may have been improved in vanilla here, but sometimes it still becomes a little bit of a problem. It does have the tabs built into vanilla here, it looks like, for the categories. Maybe that was already the case. Make this into a battery cover. The problem is if like there's a fire or anything like that, it can be annoying. A lot of times I put them outside. As long as they're roofed, we do that. Although the quality of life things seem to come along, but I still wonder didn't implement more of them. I mean, I don't think the Rimworld team is a huge team. And I mean, certainly they've been successful enough that they could hire a lot of people, but sometimes that doesn't always make for a better product, right? Um, I think I kind of want to get Psychoid Brewing. It's a, good, it's a good way to boost moods. And I actually don't know if Psychoid cares about fertility. I'm assuming it does. Oh, it's only 50%. No, that's requirement. 40% sensitivity. So it would benefit from this, but not that much. Hang on. Um, heal root. Has 100% sensitivity. How about, what about cotton? Hundred percent sensitivity. Okay. So we'll do that. And what I'll do is, I mean, maybe I can leave it in the same area, but I'm going to just use some of the non-fertile tile, the non-rich soil to grow our psychoid because it won't care too much. 
So we'll do this block over here. Cool. And what I might do while I'm at it is build a fence around this just to try to prevent random wild animals from coming in and eating our crops. A lot of drugs. It's a fair amount. We can maybe use it as a sale. I guess it means we will have to build a, um, a cooking table because that's where you do the psychoid plant. That's okay. Get rid of the... Actually, we could put the psychoid underneath the wind farm because that prevents trees from growing. It could be useful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't need a gate because the only thing you need gates for is to let uh, people bring animals in and out of things. For the aesthetic, we could. But most of the time, they don't even path through the gate anyway, because I think opening and closing the gate is no faster than just walking over a fence. Can you brew psychoid at a campfire? Oh, I don't know. Maybe you can. But I think a proper kitchen table is pro or um, a cooker is still going to be better here. A little bit of harvesting. That's nice. Could preemptively grow some hay just in case we happen to get some animals that join us, but I don't think I will. There we go, and we will be planting a wall light. Uh, there we go. On that wall over there. Major break risk. New. Oh, man. Oh, recreation. Also, you're eating raw food. Oh, probably from the lack of power. Or is no one hauling shit in here? Hold on. No one's keeping these full. That's not great. Let me uh, throw down another hopper here just to give us a little bit more space. Um, but yeah, I forgot all about recreation stuff. Let's get a horseshoe pin set up just outside. And we'll set up a chess table in here as well. I guess they've been eating without tables. Oh, I really haven't been looking at our, our people's moods. Um, we'll build a table there. I mean, I can't do anything about the awful barracks. They have to sleep in the barracks. Well, hopefully we're going to the bedroom soon, but yeah, the new colored mood bars are great. They're very similar to a mod that I ran. Minerva's up and running. Are you over your flu there, Minerva? Yeah, developed immunity. Hey, there we go. The dog's going to survive. What a, what, a, what a waste of medicine. <laughs> Now, the one thing that is still not in the base game is the ability to choose the diet of the animals. And I mean, reasonably, I suppose the animals are just going to go and eat whatever they want in a realistic way. Um, but it is annoying to, like, give them an area designation so they don't go to the area where there's like the cooked meals and blah, blah, blah. I get really annoyed by that. So I really like the animal control mod because then you can just tell the animals, listen, don't eat cooked meals. And then you don't have to worry about zone stuff. I mean, if the animals magically fall, uh, follow a zone allocation, they should also be able to magically follow a diet plan. Need a burial roll? Meh. Oh, this is, is this the, the this is our moral leader. Yeah, I know, but... Yeah, our moral guide. Problem is, you'd want to give this to someone who has the best social skill, and none of our people do. Who did I leave on the wardening job? Potch. Alright, Potch, congratulations. I mean, unless I wanted you to have the mining skill. You don't have mining passion, though, so okay. Congratulations, you're going to be the moral guide. Honest, how much sleep did you lose over murdering Crystal? Listen. Zero. Zero. And I'll tell you why. Hey, the wild heel root young art is new. That's cool. They did say about that. I'll tell you why. Um, I actually started a, another a version of that playthrough uh, the day before where I'd kept the dog alive and it was just such a huge waste of resources um, that it was like everyone's going to yell at me because it was so stupid because it was another person with no animal training skill. We just spent food. We used medicine because they got a freaking plague. We used all these resources keeping this dog alive that wasn't doing anything except doubling the amount of food we were having to produce over the course of... Where the hell are you going? Oh, metal. Okay. 
Um, and so that was annoying. Potch, before you do that, you're going to use a convert button on zero here. And it doesn't matter that they're asleep anymore in 1.5, which is very handy. There you go. You don't have much social skills, so it's never going to be that successful. But we'll put in the work anyway. Mm hmm. And yeah, I'm not going to pre-convert you. We'll just try to use the convert power and do a ritual later on. Do we... I don't know who the constructor is. Okay, new is one. Could you go and build this horseshoe pin, please? There you go. Yes, and then play. And then, oh, I was like, I can't see the freaking needs at a glance. I really miss Rimhub. I suspect that Rimhub probably works immediately. Potch is unhappy. You're right, everyone's unhappy because they are eating nutrient paste meals. But so be it. Oh, to the hopper, that is actually good. Oh yeah, I, I forgot I just put the um, the hauling priority to like super high up here. That's also one of the reasons we're grabbing things. Construct, construct, construct. Yeah, I'm actually, let me get you to make this chest table and these two chairs. ASAP. Mm -hmm. Um, so the, here's the thing with the nutrient paste dispenser. I am actually not advocating for a nutrient paste dispenser in a normal colony very much. If you are the, uh, the transhumanist or whatever it's called, um, the ideology where they don't care about nutrient paste, then it's great. But otherwise I actually just for role playing reasons, all kinds of different reasons, material, not needing power the same way. I actually just let, like to set up the, the, the cookers or the, what's it called? The uh, stoves and, and make meals basically right away. But it does add more labor. And so this time around, I'm, I'm put down the nutrient paste dispenser immediately just to see. Um, hold on, I'm just realizing. Oh my God, I forgot these are undergrounders, so they want to eat fungus. Oh my God, I completely forgot. Anyway, I put this down just to, to play it that way this time. I'm probably gonna be tearing it down relatively soon. We don't want rice. We want an underground farm. Oh my God, I completely forgot. Let's do an 11 by 11 space here and just get a huge field ready to go. And yes, it was intentional to stop mining the future freezer. I intentionally blocked that out so we wouldn't do the rest because I don't want to do that right now. Okay, so the rice over here, I'm going to turn off the allow sowing. They can harvest the rest of this. But then we'll replace it with something else. Maybe more cotton. Okay, we are going to go to help our moods out, we're going to go to a biphasic schedule right away with enforced recreation time. So do this, do that, uh, sleep here and do this. So what the biphasic schedule does, in theory, they're going to spend exactly the same amount of time sleeping throughout the day. They'll just do it in two shorter periods. Um, it, it is going to be a little worse for when you have to walk far from the base because you're going to go back more often to go to bed or to do recreation. But it means that people are going to consistently be staying at a higher mood because they're going to be trying to assert their other issues. There's a hideous environment here, which could potentially be helped by cleaning. But honestly, it's probably stuff like the skulls and just our stockpiling that's not helping. Maybe um, let me do a little high priority clean on here. We'll just try to sort everything out and see if we can help out the quality here. It's still not going to be great, but maybe we can make it a little better. Mm -hmm. Since we can't do the trick and plant a bunch of daily lives in here because it's underground, I mean, we could over here. Uh, we'll probably have to floor a little bit earlier. We might do it with just a bunch of smoothing. There you go. Barracks are getting a little bit better. Ugly environment. Nutrient paste meal. Slept in the heat. Oh, it is quite warm, actually. All right, we can turn down the cleaning now. Because yeah, I was gonna say, they're gonna do a bunch of cleaning over here, which I don't need. Um, speaking of, let's go trim this back. A lot of times what I do is I turn off the auto home zoning. Oh, I wanna turn on the auto repair. I turn off the auto home zoning and then I manually do it. In this case, just arbitrarily, I'm gonna choose to leave it on this time and instead trim back. Trying to minimize how much random cleaning is going on. Oop. Bit of a lag there as this event triggered. 
Lost scouting party to a pack of five man hunting hares. I don't think I want to deal with five man hunting hares right now. Although. That is cool. These books as a reward is quite nice. It's basically, it's sort of kind of a free tech. You still have to research it. You still have to read it, but it happens in parallel and quite quickly. I like that a lot. Yeah, we don't need the underground conscious mod anymore. We don't need the wall lights mod anymore. Um, we don't need the colored mood bars anymore. There might be a few others as well. Construction botched. I'm not even that bad at construction. Mm, I got events, unfortunate single thread was, yeah. Now, I mean, they have multi-threaded a few things, but it, it, game logic and stuff like that is, you know, everyone's like, can't you just hit the make multi-threaded button on a compiler or whatever? <laughs> but it's not, it's very much not easy to do for, uh, for lots of things. In this case, it had to be blocking because it was creating some characters which interacted with a lot of database. And it doesn't mean they can't do it or they can't optimize some step about it and how it locks, you know, the internal database. I'm not saying it's using SQL as a backend, but, you know, however it's storing its data. All right, here we go. We got this. This is a quite a large space to keep cool. We we'll probably want to go and drop some doors and things in here just to limit that, but I think it's still going to help. Yeah, it's down to 21, which is nice. So we'll set this up. And then maybe what we'll do at that point is finish the freezer. No, I don't want to deal with those. Yeah, you're right. We should. Um, it would help their mood. Well, we, I don't think we've got that much longer to convert them, so I might not bother. Yeah, I mean, the mood is still low, but deal with it. I guess I'll probably tear down the nutrient paste dispenser. Maybe when I build the fridge, maybe I, instead of building around this, maybe I'll get rid of it and we'll just set up proper cooking. Do we have someone who's... Uh, yeah, Tist is only skill four, but they do have some passion for it. So that's going to be okay. Oh, hey, has it Satisfy? Yeah, well, ten, today was supposed to be CK3. Um, all week, but this is a special exception. We'll have to see on Saturday if we're doing more of this or if we're going back to CK3. I would like to go back to CK3 because I, I worry that if we go a few days without doing it, then we'll we'll just sort of abandon it. And I want to go I want to go a little bit more. Maybe we'll get ourselves a king title. I mean, I'm not saying I'm going to play it until, you know, the end of the game or anything like that. But maybe another couple of generations. We'll see. You, you like the new RimWorld YouTube series? I'm actually having tons of fun with it. And I recorded, I think, like four episodes on my day off. And then on Monday, where normally, you know, because I'm streaming, I'm trying not to overstress things. I also recorded a bunch more episodes that day, which and I recorded some stuff yesterday, which is probably why my throat feels kind of scratchy today. I also did a episode of Dwarf Fortress this morning before the stream. So hopefully I don't go and give myself some freaking um, laryngitis again. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, there was a fourth character for a bit earlier. It was, uh, they were here just temporarily for a quest. Yeah, Egress. Just someone visiting us. They were being hunted by a man-hunting squirrel that we had to defend themselves from. We could change it so that Tist... Actually, at this point, maybe it's fine. I'm going to have Tist mine over research right now. We got the important thing was the important thing was to get a battery, which we've got. Oh, and we've got the solar panel stuff, too, which I don't feel I need right now. We'll wait until we need a little bit more power, but I'm happy that it's available. You also do other work outside YouTube and Twitch. No, I've been full time YouTube and Twitch for about 10 years now. Mm hmm. Thinking about creating a program tutorial. Do you have any tips? Man, that is tough. I found the program tutorials, they were a lot of work um, because there was a lot of pre-planning, a lot of failed takes that I would redo over and over. Um, yeah, it's it's tricky. I think the thing with the program tutorial is uh, scope. And ideally, part of the issue with me is because I was doing sort of like a project that encompassed multiple steps, doing a little video on like one feature or one mechanic is probably the, the better way to go. And it's also probably much more successful with like lookups and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Do do do. You're gonna play Arms of Tyranny on Hoi 4? I want to. It's been so long since I played Hoi 4, and I do have it, and it's installed and ready to go. 
Uh, it's hard to know when I'm going to schedule it for now, but yeah, I would very much like to. How many hours you week per week do you make, spend making content? That's hard to answer because it's split in both terms of recording, then editing, then getting it on YouTube and checking things and doing this and then doing research and playing a game as like practice for content or or whatever. So it is hard to answer. I mean, from the live streaming, I stream eight hours a week, but but that's just the active streaming. Whereas in practice, I would say whatever amount of time is spent doing the actual recording or streaming, first of all, start off by doubling it to represent just the prep work and cool down and like just regular minutiae minutia around it. And then I probably I try to spend probably probably about twice as much time with YouTube stuff than streaming stuff. How does that work out mathematically? So if I spend eight hours a, a week streaming, I'm saying a plan about doubling it for the work. That's about 16 hours. And if I'm thinking about twice as much on YouTube, call that 16. So double it to maybe about 32 altogether. That comes out to 48. Now, it's probably not quite that much. So probably bring it down to about a 40 hour week on the pure content creation. Then there's all the annoying bullshit, like the fact that I have to do bookkeeping and accounting and taxes and I have to read emails from like I get on average. Let me look at my inbox right this second. Right. So I got an email at uh, I got an email at 1202, 1205, 1254. That's a nice gap. Then 1259, then 104. 141, 159, 231, 230, 244. These are all emails from game companies. So I have to look through those, figure out which ones are relevant, try to answer email, which I hate doing. God, the only thing worse is a freaking phone call. And half these assholes want to do a Zoom call with me. I'm like, no, this could be an email and it will be an email. And then sometimes I fall way behind on email, like a week behind. And then I realized that I've like missed an opportunity to like get in early on a game or, you know, missed out on a sponsorship. That would have been cool. I mean, I get lots of sponsorship offers that, well, first of all, like 90% of them are for mobile games, which I, I don't do. You know, we just, I, I like it when it comes up every now and again, we get very lucky and it's a sponsorship for a game that we like. It doesn't happen very often. And when it does, it's like, I'm very happy to do it. Watch, can you have a little chat over here? Mm hmm. Hmm. <clears throat> This Twitch stream could have been an email. So here's the thing. We should fit. We should sell the book because we have the tech. Part of me is like, oh, we can keep the library, but maybe we can keep a library of, you know, for recreational books or something like that. It kind of makes sense to sell it for lots of different reasons, including wealth management. Although what are we going to buy? Well, they just have enough silver. We could just do it that way. Man, that is valuable. I wonder if you always start with one book for free. We should have checked that on the setup or if this book came from our too smart person or something like that. This email could have been an emoji. <laughs> Wait. Yeah, OK, yeah, we're selling it. Do we have a heart? I think our psychopath showed up with a heart. And a skull. Wow, that is some starting value. That's crazy. Do we get a pair of cows? We'll have to build a um, a fence and yard right away. You know what? I want some cows. We're doing it. We'll accept that. We need a pen. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a caravan hitching spot here because then the cows will get tied up there so they don't run away. We've got someone in animal handling. It is new over here. Good. We'll just reset you. Yeah, you'll immediately do that. Great stuff. Um, this area here currently doesn't have a lot of grass because a lot of it burned in a recent fire, but it should actually make for a great pen area. So what I think we're going to do. Is we'll take advantage of the natural stuff. I think you can fence across wind turbines perfectly fine. These are also areas where I'm planning on building walls. Some of these fences might get replaced with a wall, which will make me feel annoyed that I don't have the replace stuff mod going on. Because with replace stuff, you could just build a wall on top of the fence. Now, here we are going to need a gate to lead animals through. And in fact, I'll get a gate kind of on every side here just for convenience. And then we'll also need a pen marker in there. But we are out of wood. So let's go and chop us some trees. Chop wood. Right. I'm looking for the... Um, 
the harvest fully grown button, which I do not have. This is one of my mods. <laughs> yeah, I'm really bad about email. For good or for ill these days, for the people I work with more often, like say Paradox, mostly I interact with them through uh, Discord. Hey Quill, pay attention, there's a new subscriber. Which, the, the ill part is, it generally means I kind of have to respond right away, because, you know, it's like you get a message right away and you can see they're online, and it's like, okay, well, I can't ignore you. But the good part is, shit actually gets done, and it helps, it helps to counter my natural aversion to being responsive to email, so that's good. <laughs> you think about quitting every morning before stand-up meeting? Yeah. God, when I had my day job, the meetings were always the most annoying. And actually, as a programmer especially, and I think just because of the way that I operate, thanks to the sub, by the way, um, because of the way that I operate, um, I'm really bad about when I get interrupted with things. I mean, you guys have seen it with this, right? We're in the middle of something. My train of thought gets interrupted by like for 0.5 seconds, and I've completely forgotten what I'm doing. That's bad enough as is. But then as a programmer, I always felt like, trying to describe, I'm basically trying to upload the entire program into my brain. And only once it's been completely upgraded, uh, uploaded into my brain, then I can start working on it, right? Because then I can understand all the interconnections and how things should play and where the modules should be and whatever. And then you get interrupted by someone who's just coming in for a damn question. I worked at a fairly small company. And in addition to being like basically a, a business application developer, I was also the IT manager. So someone come in, oh, my printer's not working. Can you help? And then it's just a two minute interruption. But it like it's like now I've got to reset my internal RAM. And it's going to take me a half an hour again to figure out where the hell I was before I can even start working. And then you start working and then there's another little interruption. And then you realize you've gone through the entire day and you haven't been able to successfully write a single line of code. Ah, I don't miss those days. Fracking printers. Ah. But I think everyone who's been in those, that situation can definitely relate, right? <laughs> I hated the interruptions when I first moved from developer to lead developer. I was always deep in thought when someone asked a question. Yeah, it's tricky. Get more car course, you can multitask. I need to clone myself so I could have one person be the like IT manager tech support and the other person just be the programmer. When you were a programmer, what languages did you use the most? Um, so right before I, I left my day job to do this full time. Um, I was primarily working um, uh, Ruby on Rails, which at the time was the hotness. I was still forced to do some PHP, which I didn't appreciate. Um, my earliest jobs as a programmer, I was mostly doing work uh, with Perl, writing a lot of uh, Unix scripts and web apps in Perl back in the, the days when like the URLs that were interactive all ended with .cgi, the common gateway interface. I never, I was never a PHP programmer. I, in my last day job, one of the legacy web applications that I was having to maintain and occasionally expand already existed in PHP. And so I was, I was required to, to figure it out and work on it, but I mostly avoided it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And yeah, I still have like an intense hatred for PHP that is possibly not deserved by virtue of having to ha having had worked on this legacy application. And I'm sure whoever inherited after me thought like probably had all kinds of nasty thoughts about me. And it's like, well, first of all, I didn't make it. And secondly, yeah, all the changes I made to it were definitely like hacky bullshit. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times with those small company places, like the, you really didn't have a lot of time to do things right. Oh, a random short bow. I think I'm okay with the revolvers and the hunting rifle, but still. I think um, like JavaScript, there's nothing inherently wrong about PHP, but um, there were a lot of bad programmers working in PHP and who work in JavaScript and do things in a sloppy way. And it doesn't enforce a lot of standards. So you tend to lead to bad stuff. I actually think JavaScript is a really interesting and beautiful language that can do some really interesting things. Um, but you can also write horrible things 
and it really enables you to do terrible things. I think I need some more wood, don't I? Yeah, I didn't cut enough trees down. So let's do some more. Back in 95, we've got a code generator who's going to make coding redundant. <laughs> yeah, now we've got AI that's totally going to do the same thing. And I've got to admit, it's pretty useful. Um, I, a couple of months ago, decided to try ChatGPT to help me write some code. So as an experiment, I was like, okay, one of the things I'd always wanted as a convenient little tool was a simple little command line script that would help me um, chop up long videos from live streams, say, into convenient VOD size things. And so I asked ChatGPT to help me write it in Python. Python is not something I have a lot of experience with. So I thought, oh, we'll do that. Um, it took several iterations of going back and forth. And there were some bugs that I was finding that I'd like, I'd go back to the GPT. I'm like, are you sure about this? I asked you to do this and I'm pretty sure this will do that. And it would be like, oh yeah, my bad and do that. Um, and so it definitely would never have worked as a non-programmer trying to make it work. But it did probably in the end do the job faster than if I had just written it myself, especially since I would have had to do some looking up because like, I don't know what the Python module would have been would is to like interact with. I was gonna say interact with video editing. Hell, I don't know what the Python module is to interact with the file system. So I would have had to constantly look all that stuff up. Whereas if there's some code, even if it's not ideal code, but that's at least generated as a starting point, that's I can definitely deal with that. Mm hmm. About that, use the Gradle build system? I don't know what the Gradle build system is. So I definitely didn't use it. Oh man, psychic drone affecting male, and we know all of our people are male. Even though I think I tend to refer to new as female because of the hair. Because I'm incompetent when it comes to correctly identifying genders. I feel like I'm the, um, I'm, what's his name? Um, in Doctor Who, the potato guy, the Sonteran, who hangs out with the, the lizard lady and, and her wife, and they solve crimes in Victorian London. Um, I'm like that. He is completely in, un, incapable of identifying genders, and that's how I feel like most of the time when we're playing video games. Strax. Yeah, I was going to say Drax. I'm like, no, Drax is the guy from uh, Gardens of the Galaxy. Yes, yeah, Strax. Come here, boy. Like, I'm, a, I'm a woman. No, oh, right? You're a boy woman. A great character. God, I think, I think the, I can't remember what they were called. Those three had a nickname and I can't remember what they're referred to. I feel they got a little overused at a little point, but man, their first few appearances were great. Two genders more than you can count. <laughs> Pattern Noster Gang. That's what it is. Thank you. I knew they had a name. So we have to go and put down some sort of like, yeah, there we go. Fungal gravel, right? Yeah. Pen marker, did I not? Oh, that's right. I was going to put it down, but we didn't have any wood at the time. So the wood uh, pen marker wasn't there as an option. There you go. Put that down there. Oh, we're sealed in and everything. Okay, so yeah, definitely that. I guess I could, as it turns out, not cut down as many trees. I'll still designate some of these in here. That's fine. We're still going to need some extra wood. Mm-hmm. Astronosters are weird. Elevators, people of death with. Oh, right, those things. They do look cool, but yeah, they also look kind of dangerous. I think I've been in a building in Berlin that had one. A yeah, random compact of Nishriner. Cool, little bonus. All right. <laughs> I'm going to put a little double door there just for the temperature management to stay in here. They don't look dangerous, they are, yeah. Tom Scott does have a video about them. He's got a video about a lot of elevator things. Is anyone else a fan of the um, uh, Tom Scott's Lateral podcast? Great quiz show. I mean, I don't have quiz, I guess it is a quiz show. Dub actual double doors are a thing now, sort of. The wooden ornate door is a double door, although it actually covers four tiles, but you need gold for it. So I'm still gonna just do these two doors side by side over here. Any gold on the map? Well, hey, let's use our handy dandy new search tool that's built into the game. Zero results found. 
Doesn't mean there's no gold, it just means there's no gold visible right now. Some exploratory digging might reveal some. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cow one is pregnant, hey! How lovely is that? So we'll put an auto cut on here. I'm just gonna cut down the, the trees. Actually, even then, it's big enough, I'm not worried about the nutrition thing, it's just putting the tree cut, it could be very convenient to um, just keep a steady supply of wood. Although this would cut them immediately as they show up. What uh, The only thing I really want is a cut fully mature trees thing. I guess what I could do for something like that as a trick is you could build this growing zone somewhere. And what you can do is turn off sewing. What this is gonna do with the cutting is I believe this will immediately cut any fully grown plants in the area. How does that interact with the trees? Does it actually just wait until they're fully grown? Or is it gonna cut down this one? We're gonna find out. So Potch is cutting down this tree, which is ready to harvest. It's gonna cut down this tree, which is ready to harvest. This one, yep. This one here, okay, and I think they're leaving this one. I think he, they are only gonna cut down 100% fully mature trees which is great. Also, um, it'll harvest the heel root when it's fully mature. This is also what you do when there's an ambrosia sprout somewhere. You build a growing zone around it. You say, disallow sowing. We don't want anything there. But then whenever the ambrosia becomes fully grown, they'll get harvested at that time. It's actually kind of a useful little trick. I think it's only gonna cut down the other trees if it were to try to plant, because it would try to cut them down to get them out of the way. But we're gonna find out. It doesn't look like they're going around cutting down any more trees. If we did enable sowing, then they would go and clear everything out. But yeah, I think this is just going to constantly cut down any fully grown trees, which is going to be a nice steady supply of wood, an efficient thing, because cutting down the non-mature trees still takes a bunch of labor, but doesn't give you anywhere near as much wood. I think we're going to have to increase our dumping stockpile here. So I will do that. <clears throat> Leave a tile to allow walking next to the farm. You suggesting people don't walk through farms? Or they try to avoid walking next to farms and they'll pathfind in an inconvenient way unless they have no choice? No, I know thought tree trick. Yeah, now I don't normally do it because I normally run a mod that just adds this chop tool and cut plants and harvest. It adds another one that is harvest fully grown with the ability to do only plants or only trees. And it's very convenient because then you just like box over an area and it'll ignore anything that's not fully matured yet. Like this heel root here, it wouldn't harvest this one, but this one here is ready to harvest. So it would do that one. And what I would just do, and I'll do this in my video. You can see like my current series because I'm running it is like, I'll just double click to select a bunch in a visible area or sometimes um, because it's the same, it's the allow tool mod, I think, uh, which allows me, gives me a button here so I can select all of it on the map as well. And then I just click the harvest fully grown. Whereas this will harvest the partially grown, which isn't always the best use for a time. So I do like that mod. And I think it would be reasonable-ish to add that, even with just maybe not even a dedicated button, but in vanilla, they could make it with this cut chop wood. If you hold shift, only have it do fully mature trees. Like you could add that. Again, in a vanilla baseline game doesn't necessarily need every user interface thing that people come to appreciate for mods. The base game needs to be simple enough and accessible enough and not too cluttered. But doing things with like hidden modifier keys and stuff like that, or not necessarily hidden modifier keys, but hit with modifier keys is one way of doing that sort of thing. What if I do it this way and do that? There we go. Mm -hmm. It's one more bedroom than we need right now, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. We only need four in total, and we've got that. Unless we use this as a storage room or something. We'll see. Ba -da -da. We're clearly going to go and mine this out, because we're going to want that component at some point. I guess we could rebuild it as a wall after. We'll see. Actually, I just realized I really want to keep working on this area first. This is my priority, because I want to get our fungus growing so we can fix our moods a little bit more. Oh yeah, if we're not replanting, I guess I should start growing shrooms now. Do the shrooms need light? 
I know I had some difficulty setting it up. Last time I set up um, a colony, that was like our wolf pack or whatever. It was the first time I tried doing the um, the underground shroom stuff. And I remember having some some difficulty making sure it was set up properly. One of the issues, I think it had to be on their overhead mountain. This is all clearly overhead mountain. Shrooms need darkness. Oh yeah, you can use dark light if you want some light in here without being a problem for these shrooms. Now I'm remembering it. <laughs> Construction botches. Oh, I forget you got your cooldown. Now, there's a... Oh my god, do you seriously just go on a binge as I try to hit this freaking button? Final straw darkness. What kind of undergrounder are you? I know, they're not blindsight people, but still. Yeah, the no smooth inside the prison room is just a, a time thing. We're gonna smooth all these bedrooms, but we've got we've got way too much crap going on right now. I, I really wanted you to go and do a conversion here, buddy. How are you finding 1.5 so far? No quality life, other missed changes. Um, a lot of little nice. It's the it's the right thing. I mean, I don't think the baseline patch is gonna be the most dramatic thing ever. Although the book stuff is very cool. Um, the built-in wall light. There's, there's like just a few things where like, yeah, we don't need this mod anymore. We don't need this mod anymore. We don't need this mod anymore. So it's clearly a very good patch. Um, and I think the book thing is is quite a cool change. I'm trying to remember the other things that were in there. We read all the patch notes to start the stream. Um, I think it's excellent, but May it's, it's maybe less meaningful to people who are normally running a very heavily modded game because some of the benefits in the baseline we kind of have ourselves. I'm excited about the performance improvements. That's going to be good. I mean, clearly 1.5 is an excellent patch. But yeah, looking for anomaly. Okay, you're done. Come over here. Do the conversion. Thank you. And yeah, we're supposed to get messages when those cooldowns come up, but I hadn't noticed it. Missed the explanation of the book thing. So, there are books. Thing. Oh, we sold ours. Um, there are books now. And there are bookshelves. There you go. Wooden bookcase. Yeah. Links to the simple workbench. Although I don't think the bookcase by itself does anything until it's got some books in it. Which I guess we could have kept the book so that we could put it in the bookcase. Which adds beauty and increases research speed. But anyway. Um, there are three different types of books. Novels, which I think are mostly for recreation. Schematics, which we started with one. That by reading the book, it gave us research. We got the smithing research without actually ever researching it simply by someone reading the book and textbooks which i think are the ones that teach skills we haven't gotten one of those yet but those of you in the game we it looks like in vanilla you don't write them yourselves you can either trade for them or get them as quest rewards but i'm betting mods will make it so you can write yourself a random wanderer joined all right why not let's rename you to why not no health problems neurotic psychically dull Neurotic does have the uh, mental break threshold increase, but increases your work speed. Construction, cooking, animals, crafting. All right. We're going to have to do a conversion. The Den of Shame. There. Why not? There's an Edekin. I don't know too much about their thing. Oh, that's right. They're extra aggressive. Higher social fight chance. Slow to heal, but you are robust. You're bad at mining. That's fine. We don't need you to mine. Let's just do a copy paste here. We'll leave the doctoring on because apparently that's what we're doing. Your animal handling starts at 11. I might leave it on for new as well. I like to cook, construct. You have passion for crafting. That's very useful. Okay, very useful indeed. He's carried being killed repeatedly. So, I mean, we haven't named everyone after Twitch because we don't, we don't have the automatic tool running. Uh, there we go. That has been broken. Lovely. 
We will need these extra bedrooms sooner. Do, 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 do. It can have the ability to make animals attack your enemies. Pretty cool. Can you be used through walls? Uh, I haven't made much use. I have to admit, I've been pretty bad with biotech about using the different xenotypes. And I really have to do some more runs focused around that. But in the uh, um, the Arquinexus run that we're doing currently on YouTube, I am hoping to do some genetic stuff because it's going to help us carry over more power between sites as we sell everything. Because we basically get to bring nothing with us between whenever we sell our base and restart again, other than five people and like a minuscule amount of loot. But if those five people are all biotically enhanced and genetically enhanced, then that seems pretty good. Oh, 1.5 has the double doors. They're not, again, they're not actual double doors, not normal double doors, it's the ornate doors, but they're great. This is just two doors side by side. All right, Zero's been recruited. Who's an actual doctor? Well, hold on a sec, let's do that. And you are going to go, where do we do it on here? Self-tend. We will occasionally have to enable doctoring on others in case Zero is the one who gets hurt. But that's going to be an okay start. You're also passionate, so we'll turn on the wardening for you. Um, I guess I'll turn on childcare just for if we've got it. And, and research. Okay. You know what? That's fine. You're going to spend basically all your time researching and occasionally butting in on some other emergency stuff. That's lovely. I think we'll probably need a second research bench. Mm-hmm. I guess I kind of want to start my growing zone over here now because... Uh, Nutrifungus. We got to get the plantings going. Okay, this here, what are we going to plant instead? This was where we were growing our rice, but we're not doing that anymore. Might just want a bunch more cotton just so that we can get some outfits going for our people. This could be changed to um, Devil Strand later, maybe. Maybe we can start doing hops as well. Hay for winter. I guess we do have some animals. Uh, we're going to grow some hay, but I'm not going to use the fertile soil for that. I'm going to dance around this. And then so you, you, here, you're all going to grow hay. Because you don't have a very... Uh, sensitive thing. Yeah, for now, we'll just get a bit more cotton. We won't need this much later on, but it'll help us kickstart our um, clothing industry. The new people may not want to eat shrooms right now, but they're going to have to deal with it. We're going to try to get them converted. I think we should plan a temple sooner rather than later. Oh, we got another raid. Edikins, they're attacking immediately. It's just one with a knife. Zero, what's your... You have no fighting skill whatsoever. Well, go ahead and equip this bow. And yeah, we'll just make use of the rocks to slow some people down. Okay. Um, don't shoot the bison. Oh my god. Okay, it didn't go berserk. That's good. Someone hit. There we go. Wow. Death in four hours, and they're still going. I'm going to leave your food farm for us. I suppose we could. Yeah, I guess we could still grow some rice. I think our people are smart enough to eat the right thing, right? Tell you what it will do. Let me go and shrink the zone thusly. Yeah, that's a good point. So we'll keep growing some rice. do that. Are you still alive? Man. Pessimist, night owl, psychically dull, which is dropping the psychically sensitive. Construction. You've got a lot of skills. Pessimist is pretty annoying. Although it could be countered with night owl. Do we recruit this person? Sure. 
Uh, is it why not or is it zero who's her doctor? Oh, it's zero who's her doctor. Zero, I'm going to go and tell you to tend without medicine. Two hours, five hours, there we go. Because there was no way we were bringing you back to the room without you bleeding to death ahead of time. Now, recruiting should go easier now. But we do have the issue that our, um, our warden isn't of our ideology, so we can't have our warden do the conversion. Oh, sorry, you're sleeping on the ground there. I mean, you're also sleeping on the ground. We got to get these bedrooms going. Shamers will be upset if mining occurs. Suck it up and deal. People still choose to eat, to eat if it's on a hopper. Uh, no, but we're gonna we're gonna move to cooking instead. We're gonna get rid of the nutrient paste dispenser, which is a waste of material, but it has saved us some labor in the early game, so I think it may have been fine still. So, mushroom grow rate 96%, so presumably you're okay. What's your temperature range that you like? 0 to 58, which is fine. It's 19 in there. We are getting the low food thing. We could do some. We could do some hunting in the short term. Um, there we go. Ooh, not too many because it will rot. Muffalo do have a ten percent chance of snapping, so we don't want to go after them. I could enable hunting for multiple people, but there's just an increased chance that they shoot each other. Eatkins eat more than normal pawns. Okay, well that's a whole thing. Merchants. Zero, do you want to go have a chat with them? We have a bunch of money. We have a bunch of crappy knives. Maybe I'll keep the plasteel knife and the auto pistol just to see. We'll buy the herbal medicine to save us some effort. I don't think I'm going to buy the pemmican, even though we're kind of in a low food situation here, as it turns out. We'll hopefully compensate with hunting. Oh! She has an infection. Okay. Well, we're just going to limit ourselves to herbal, still. 30% 10 quality. Let's see how that works out. Here, just in the interest of whatever, I will go and turn on multiple hunters. Zero, could I get you to switch the auto pistol? Because you're bad at shooting, but the auto pistol's short range and fires fast. A flame bow? Wow. She is male? Yep, okay. That's not going to be confusing to me at all. When I say I'm like really, really bad at this. I really, uh, English really needs a uh, neutral single person. Like, they works, but sometimes it's confusing when you're using it because obviously it's doing double duty with the, um, uh, like the plural. So, depending on context, you're like, wait, are you talking about one person or multiple people? So, English really needs one. I know there's been efforts to try to construct one and it's been hard to take up, but God, would it ever make, like, everything simpler. <sighs> Nutrient paste left the ground. Tree felled. Mind. Listen, you. We're really gonna have to use our convert action a lot. Actually, we could try convert ritual. A rat self tamed. All right, who's up for a rat burger? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Do 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 do. Think Val comes as archaic. Well, Thou is just you. And the problem is that 
English didn't have the thorn symbol, um, which so they put in the th. You don't actually say thou or the. It was always y yao or ye. Another raid right away. Attack immediately. There's two of them. Paul and Nathan. Oh, these are the people we pissed off by kidnapping one of them. I regret nothing. Um, are you guys going to come around to the left or the right? You're coming along around the right. Okay. I'll tell you what. Let's just sit behind these rocks here. Deck of John's partner proves rat burger. Yeah, but how do the three seashells work? That's the real question. What are you going to hit me with over there? Revolver? And you're not going to have much in the way of accuracy there, I'm sure. We should go and set up a trap hallway soon, though. Actually, can you guys shoot? Oh, he's in cover now. Uh, Patch was not in range of anything. Oh, they're fleeing already. Oh, because he got down. Great. Uh, Patch, or can you come over here, please? That's fine, they're running away. And then a revolver, some neutromine. That's actually very convenient. Five bucks in the Essentia, Essentia tip jar if I can be the pet rat. Well, oh no, I think it's too late. I think it's already happened. Mm -hmm. Or oh, wait, I'm doing it the other way around, aren't I? It's when you'd see the ye old shop. Sorry, I'm doing it backwards. When you're seeing the ye old shop, it's not ye old shop. It was always the old shop. That's what it is. So I guess it was never you. It was always the. That's I. Yeah, sorry. I inverted that. Or as I like to say it, the ye old old the ye old day shop -a, as they like to write it. Right. Because it's always Y E S H O P P E. Oh, wait, old O L D E. S H O P P E. Ye olde shoppy. That's right, because the Y was the thorn symbol, which was a th or the, depending on if it's uppercase or lowercase, I think, right? Why not got a corpse obsession? Because venerated rat died? Oh no, they venerated rats? Hold on, should we should we change the why not's ideology? The den of shame! I have to admit, I feel shame now. You venerate rats and timber wolves. Two things that we have venerated in our per, uh, previous playthroughs. I'm sorry, is it 438? I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to go long. I mean, I'm sure no of you are mines, but it's not great for my voice, and I'm stepping all over uh, Kiss for Luck stream. Wow, time flies. All right, let's uh, unforbid this corpse so someone bears it. No Norm. Or oh, this normal bow. It's like, we don't have someone called Norm. <laughs> New, could you maybe uh, go ahead and bury them, please? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, it looks like we're going to be out of graves. It's taken up some of our um, pasture space, although it is a big enough pasture that doesn't really matter. So for defenses, which I'm going to deal with, and then we'll wrap it up. And then I don't know, we'll do it. We'll do a poll on the uh, subscriber discord. Uh, if people want CK3 or if they want this to continue. What is this, silver? Oh, yeah, that's uranium. Okay. Let's do that. Um, Let's do this. And one of these places is where we're going to end up building the uh, kill box as well. Okay. And then we'll leave in some doors and we're going to do the airlocky double door thing, which admittedly looks really dumb, but is very helpful. If we do this, the reason is if you're getting chased by a critter and you make it through a door, the critter might smash the door to get through. But then all they see is another door and they're like, oh, never mind. There was no one here. And then they abandon their chase. So that's why we do this little setup over here, even though, yeah, it looks kind of dumb. Once this wall is up, I can get rid of this fence because the wall will act as the fence, but um, same thing here. We'll do that, then get rid of the fence and then build an extra double door in there. But yeah, the airlock is very helpful for preventing some issues. So I think it might make sense for us to maybe build our defensive area over here because it's fairly close to our front door. 
So the plan for now is just going to be to leave a gap. Do that. Build a collection of spike traps. And then build something. You can use sandbags, but it's much more materially efficient, I think, to build a series of fences like this. Because what will happen is your own people can wiggle through. Whereas bad guys... Oh, and I'll do another airlocky thing here. Um, bad guys will be like, oh, fences slow me down. I don't want to work through fences. I will walk through this area. And then they'll walk through all the traps. And then we'll... I don't know, maybe extend it and then set up the kill, like the actual like defensive kill box over here. The important thing is to just get up a, a trap hallway to casually kill the early things that we're going to be dealing with here. And that's going to be pretty good. Okay. Do, 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 do. I was going to make my exterior walls three tiles thick for temperature control reason. Didn't realize about the airlock ideas. Um, so first of all, I think, I don't know, do three tiles actually make a difference? I thought two tiles was the only thing that made a difference. The other thing we could do, hold on, let's do a save. So the bookworms, let's very quickly before we end, we're going to see if something has been fixed. We're going to dev mode. We're going to go into God mode. We're going to get a geothermal generator just for some power. We are going to build a space that is that doubled walled. We're going to deconstruct, deconstruct. Um, how do I do this? What was my silly trick? It's wooden door. Whoops, wooden door. Cancel that one. Temperature. Like this, like this. This door stays open. We'll have to have some physically walk over here to do that. We're going to see if this has been fixed. And the power. And then let's just grab... Oomst ever. Come over here. Good. Um, let me cancel this. Why did you come over here? Oh, because you're building a roof. Right. That does need to happen, actually. Um, here. Max construct and then max haul. Just to get rid of the stuff out of here. I wonder if you can god mode the roof. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to set these things to super freezing levels and check the temperature in here. Oh, there we go. Last roof. It's all indoors. Temperature is going down. Uh, we turn on the temperature overlay. Oh, I think it still works. <laughs> so what's crazy about this is I didn't chimney. There's a roof over there. You can actually do this inside a deep mountain as well. Yep, it totally works. Where's the temperature going? I'm going to set to minus 49. It's still getting colder. Maybe not as cold, but it's still clearly working. So the reason this works is these two things are dumping heat where the door is. And a door isn't a room. A door never counts as a room. Um, and only rooms have temperatures. Tiles don't have temperatures. Rooms have temperatures. So the way that a door works is a door is constantly resetting its temperature to the average of both rooms it's adjacent to. So it's where it's getting the super heavy temp dumped in from these coolers that are pouring all their hot air in here. But then they're e this tile is then immediately resetting its temperature to the average of the two adjacent things. And you want to keep the door open in this case because you want the temperature to be over here. It's like completely weird, completely degenerate, not actually necessarily the most efficient thing for temperature. The having an actual chimney to dump the temp outside is better, but this actually works under a heavy mountain where there's no roof. Oh, she's going to die because of the infection. Whatever. I mean, we'll reload, but they'll probably still die next time. Um, so it's very convenient if you want the cheesy here. It doesn't matter. This is just entertaining, but kind of meaningless because you could just build a chimney. In, in which case, what I would probably do, just because it, I think, looks fairly decent, is do something like that and then unroof this tile here so that it acts as a, the chimney, right? That's perfectly fine. Um, but yeah, under here with the overhead mountain, there's no ability to build chimney at all. 
So then you can use this trick to have a freezer deep inside your overhead mountain base. And honestly, I'm less, I'm not as bothered by that because there should be the ability in, in a realistic way, there should be an ability for us to pump the temperature, the hot air. We should be able to vent it down a ventilation thing to outside, um, which I guess sort of we could mine it, but it feels awkward. Now, there are mods that let you do like ventilation pipes and more temperature control and things like that. I don't know, is ba Dub's Bad Hygiene supported or maybe not? Maybe it's something else that I usually see running next to Dub's Bad Hygiene um, for that kind of temperature control. So in that case, I might be willing to do it, even though it's kind of sort of breaking the game but it's so entertaining. It's so entertaining. I love that this works. All right, look, the temp's getting like lower and lower and lower over here. It's totally fine. You might still want to build a little airlock over here for the walkers, right? You might still want to do something like this. And remember, you don't actually need diagonals. This is totally enclosed. And then now we have an airlock that when people walk through here, not as much temperature will be lost which will be relevant if they're trying to grab this stuff. Although it's dangerous temperature. Look at that, it's minus 40 now. The temperature keeps going down and down and down. Lisa in this house, we obey the laws of thermodynamic. It's been a long time since I've seen that Simpsons episode where Lisa builds a perpetual motion machine. Mm -hmm. That was, that was do it, excited to see the VE temperature spin on it. There you go, okay. But yeah, I, this just entertained me so much. Anyway, we're gonna. We're, this is obviously not where we're leaving that off. It's gonna be this version of the save without God mode on, without Dev mode running. Do 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 do. Oop, like that. No cheesy thing. Probably this person's still gonna die from the infection. They were very badly hurt, and we treated them in the middle of the field over here with no medicine. So it kind of makes sense that a you got infected and b oh you are close. If we allowed you more powerful medicine, you might be okay. We'll have to see. Anyway, we're gonna wrap it up now. We're gonna go and raid it because for Lux Channel, what's she playing today? Is she doing that writer game again? Or, I, I'm oh, she's running around in Elder Scrolls Online. Give her some love. I'll see you on Saturday for what might be RimWorld, what might be CK3, might be a double stream, might be something completely different depending on if they've like announced another game or another expansion to one of her favorite games. Who knows? Thanks a lot. And uh, if you haven't watched it, I did start a RimWorld series on YouTube that I started recording before this uh, expansion was announced. So fun stuff. See you soon. Bye bye.